This thing on? This thing on? What's up? What's up? What's up? We are back, and this is like the first show of the year, the new year, 2018. I am your host of this, whatever type of voyage you want to call it, Rajay, and along with Joe from Buffalo, whose Bills are in on the playoffs. Well, not really. Not my Bills. I'm a Seahawks fan, damn it. Uh, are the Seahawks in the playoffs? <laughs> no, so I'm not I'm a Bills fan. Go Bills. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and we got Eric, who thought beginning of the year his Lions would be in the playoffs, and he's out of Michigan, yeah. of course. And then we got Todd with – there was really no hope for Indianapolis at any point. Really. The number three pick in the draft. <laughs> <laughs> so they're locking in for good picks for this upcoming season. <laughs> and, of course, uh, longtime Panthers fan. So, yeah, my team is in the playoffs. So uh, welcome, everyone, as we kick off – the first episode of 2018 and tonight we are actually talking about boston beer aka samuel adams and uh joe will give us a nice rundown on that kind of stuff and get into it biggest thing with uh samuel adams one of the things that drives me crazy about samuel adams is people say well samuel adams sold out they sold out they sold to boston beer like you do know Jim Cook actually founded it as Boston Beer, correct? Mm-hmm. They never really sold anybody. He founded it as that company, and that was just one of their brand labels. So I know what uh, post you're referencing to. Yeah, so it's just like, stop saying Sam Adams sold out. They were founded as Boston Beer. The Sam Adams is their brand they have for the beer, just like they have their Angry Orchard for, like, the cider or whatever. So just one of those things that always drives me crazy when I hear people thinking they sold out. Now, if you want to say the Brewers Association – Maybe they sold out a little bit because they went from two million to six million barrels to keep Sammy out. Well, you might have a little bit of something there as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they did move the line to keep uh, Boston beer as part of it. So anyway, we'll get into a lot of these good things and talk about some of the beers. The beers I have tonight, actually, the Boston Ale, which is actually the first time I've seen this one, the Rebel Rouser IPA, and then the Rebel Group Grapefruit IPA. I was going to get a couple that said, I need a third because I've really had a long day working. So these are going to go down pretty quickly, most likely. And I got my little Samuel Adams taster glass. And I used to have a Samuel Adams drinking glass. My wife accidentally broke it. I don't know. I think it went down like the leg in a Christmas story. I think she had something against the glass. I just heard that crash. And it was like, was that my Sammy Adams class? And she was like, yes. And I was like, are you kidding me? So <laughs> I didn't go out back and play taps like in the movie or anything, but I did like that glass. I know Eric has one of those. I don't know if he's using it tonight or not, but I'm not, not so you guys, sorry, what are you guys drinking tonight? <laughs> I am drinking the old traditional Boston lager. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. No, no. Delusia? No, no. (laughs) I'm drinking the uh, old traditional Boston lager. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all I got. (laughs) (laughs) Do you get a sixer of those? Yeah, I got a sixer of them for about $7.99, I think is what I paid. There you go. Joe, what do you got? Uh, uh, night numbers. <laughs> oh, I got some Rajay deals coming your guys' way. Don't you worry about that. I got uh, Freshest Hellas, which is the Hellas lager brewed with orange blo- orange blossoms, plural, and uh, natural flavor added because there wasn't enough in there to begin with. So. Do you really need to put the S on there? Isn't it like blossom is just like for one or many? Yeah, but they put the S on there. Okay. They put the S on the label, which is why I was like, okay, that's all right. A lot of, lot of orange blossoms. Yeah, that's what I'm drinking. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm glad that the orange blossoms is not overpowering in this one. It's uh, it's all right. I don't, I'd, I'd be curious to know what that natural flavors added is, though. And Todd, what do you got there? I've got the White Christmas. And. The Rebel IPA. Okay, so you get the regular Rebel IPA. All right. No Utopias? Who, what? <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to bust yeah. out a whole ounce of it because <laughs> I also have the uh, Bohemian Pilsner for later, which is just I'm just drinking all the lagers tonight because I don't know why. That's on me. Doing a little lager, are we? Oh, baby, there's never enough lagers up in here. 
<laughs> what kind of cheese would you put with that lager? <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit of smoked gouda, perhaps. Uh, definitely not more of your pungent cheese like Limburger or Gargantola or anything. I have to keep the mind. Stinky, stinky cheese. Yeah, don't stinky cheese, baby. We don't oh, need to think of a joint. Boston Ale was spitting out of the uh -huh. bottle there. And, Boston and I am Ale drinking them out of my same Adams glass. I right, all Sam Adams glass working. Does everybody have a Samuel Adams uh, perfect pint glass? I do, but I'm yeah. drinking out of the Hard Rock Cafe Boston. Glass. Oh, that's hey, there you go. That's much better. Uh, <laughs> I broke mine in a rage of fit because I wasn't happy one night with Boston. Uh, there's Samuel Adams, so I just broke you it. You just grabbed the bottle and threw it. Yeah, I just bottle. smashed it. I was like, I'm never going to buy you again. Then I bought another one. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, the perfect pint glass is all right. Like uh, there's people that like swear by it. Like oh yeah, turn, it's, it's all right. The Boston Ale smells very much like the Boston Lager. Maybe when it's it, it, pretty malty and sweet. That's all I'm saying. I'm like, come on, you guys just change the label or what? They probably just changed the ale yeast or from you know log yeast to ale yeast and obviously fermented it. Yeah, how an ale is supposed to be fermented, but they pro I'd imagine it has this very similar ingredients. Five point four ABV, robust and smooth. Got a cute yeah, little dog with a label, though, right there. For all you dog lovers out there. Oh, my God. The Owen 16 Browns. Right, he's actually say, yo, dog. Speaking of dog lovers, <laughs> RIP Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, that's terrible. <laughs> Just in general, that's terrible, Cleveland, right? Hey, hey they're, with us. they're with us, Joe. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I forgot about that. Not really, though. They took you. They, they stole your thunder. I know. I was hoping they would win at least one. <laughs> we have a couple comments that I'll read before we get into the first uh, Already stuff that we have. Board. All right. Yeah, there's, there's a lot, actually. Game, actually. We got Chris from on the 10th says, first troll trader. <laughs> uh, our buddy Ewart Taku Murray says, no bigger troll than a thumbs downer. And I believe he gave us a thumbs down. Mother effort, Ewart. <laughs> Unthumbs down it. Thumbs it back up, you son of a bee. Um, <laughs> Chris continues with hello gentlemen and then Ewart says hey y'all and Earth says howdy. So all three of them guys. Hello, hello. fellas. You know, probably a Craig pop in or something if he's around. Yeah, Ewart says, uh, thank God the lines fired Caldwell, bring on the Patriots OC, which is what Josh McDaniel. Um Jim Josh Caldwell McDaniel's was the best. Patriots. <laughs> Caldwell was still even coaching. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised he was, he was the, as long as he did with the Lions. There. Honestly, his face and his whole like just his demeanor looked like a totally eight and eight coach at all times. Yeah, well, Marvin got a couple more years in Cincinnati, which started driving yeah. some of the people crazy here. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah, you know, for Marvin, you guys weren't even sniffing the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, their their owner is the issue, right? I mean, oh yeah, when they did the so. uh, episode on HBO that season of Hard Knocks, mm -hmm. whatever, everybody saw mm -hmm. how much of an ass Mike Brown is. Yeah, he was like Jerry Jones on steroids. Not literal steroids, but just like to the nth degree. He was just like, I can't believe this dude's the GM, the president, the owner doing everything, and it doesn't look like he knows anything. So, yeah, it was yeah. very well, uh, I guess his daughter's daughter is supposed to take over. She's even worse, I heard. So, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it says that fans should be pumped. Yeah. Um, Chris on the 10th again. I, I don't know why I keep on saying call you need to Chris. Uh, he says, It's Sammy Adams to the rest of you, but Rod. No, it's still Sammy Adams. It's just that's just the brand, but the company is the Boston Beer Company. It is. It's the Boston Beer Company. Um, Ewart continues with, "I really don't mind Boston Lager at all, and quite enjoy the Rebel IPA." His old man, aka his father, uh, drinks the, the Rebel IPA all the time. Yeah, and uh, and then Chris making a uh, age joke to Ewart says, "You talking about yourself in the third person again, Ewart?" I thought that was pretty good. And then he said, the older old man. Um, Bum is in here, and he says, Boston Al is the Chris Jagger slash Frank Stallone of the Sam Adams family. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good, Bum. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Ewart tries to tries to troll a little bit, Bum, just slightly, and fails a little bit. He says, I don't get those references. Like, super popular old brothers who were good in school. <laughs> Yeah, your 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 troll game is very, very, very not strong right now. Um, Chris, Chris does I smooth. Expect better from you, that's all I'm gonna say. I expect better from him. I do. He, he he does a good job at trolling, but sometimes he just falls off a cliff. You know, it just it happens. <laughs> it's probably as brutal. Him. It's like hold on. It's like hold on. I think it's a troll, but not a good one. Um, Bum says the quote obscure younger brother end quote 
dot 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 <laughs> and then uh jamie from basement beer uh says teku's old man fought in the first boar war <laughs> <laughs> he's old get it yeah no we get it he's super old could it be all of his references of our 40 like, like donnie Wahlberg? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, donnie Wahlberg was the new kids on the block man shout out to him for that i guess not really terrible he absolutely terrible. Obscure, though it's yeah. back with his roles in Saul. It's like, wait a minute, I've seen that guy before. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, why aren't you dancing and singing pop songs? <laughs> Let me out of the trap. <laughs> yeah. And then one, and then one last troll comment from uh, Chris to Ewart. He says, Ewart's old. He has Moses in his contact list. So there you go. Finish it up with a very religious joke. <laughs> <piece. laughs> and now we're going to move away from comments for that, a little bit. That kind of sits with you, but it kind of gets better as it sits there. You got to let it like breathe a little bit. <laughs> the Boston L or that, that actual troll comment? They're both. <laughs> Come back later. You know, that was, that was kind of funny there. That was, that was good. good. <laughs> high, high five, Chris. Yeah. You figured it out. <laughs> let it settle. Let it simmer. Simmer down now. Simmer down now. Um, so as far as stuff happening in the beer world, I don't know if you guys saw anything out there. I didn't get a chance to really run through a lot of the beer happenings this week. Um, Dogfish Head launched in Louisiana, uh, in early January here. So they'll be having some other beers taking place down there. I thought they were down in Louisiana already, though. I thought they were too already. Yeah. They're off kilter beers celebrating mm -hmm. the 23rd anniversary. If only I knew someone who reviewed beer on YouTube for Louisiana. I've anybody out there <laughs> curious about the reviews? Oh, you were you were yeah, you were you were from Louisiana, no doubt. <laughs> he acts like it. So, guy said he lived on nothing but beer for a week and survived. So, yeah, more power to him, I guess. Yeah. We all got goals. I mean, you know. <laughs> There was a list that came out earlier. I saw like some of the best places for beer. I know Cincinnati was ranked number four, but number one was like Portland, Maine, which I mean, yes, is Treehouse up there, Joe? Where? Like in Portland, Maine, or somewhere near there? Uh, Treehouse is in um, or, or Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Canton, I believe, Massachusetts. No, or not the other one. Then there's Treehouse, there's Trillium, there's oh, there's Bissell Brothers up in Maine. Yeah. That's the, pot, the other popular. Well, one of the popular. I know ones. Maine and Vermont both has some pretty decent beer. At, I've been told. Yeah, Maine has uh, Maine Brewing Company, which has been popular for quite a long time. Foundation Brewing. Uh, they have Allagash up there as well. and So yeah. a lot of good breweries in Maine, actually. And a lot of the breweries have released their um, calendars and stuff. So I've been trying to update those on the Facebook page. But all their releases that are coming out for 2018, that stuff is coming out. So there's some pretty good uh, notable beers. Uh, oh, yeah, here's the thing here. Cincinnati ranks high for beer lovers. Um, do, 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 do. How about people who just like beer? Not not high for them? Yeah, I love oh. the beer. <laughs> well, number one on the list, I know it was Portland, Maine. Uh, no, sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. They were number two. Number one was Asheville, North Carolina. Which is definitely yeah. a place I like to check out because there's a lot of stuff happening down there from what I hear. And they've been and popular, popular for a, a while. Yeah. Long Asheville. Long. And it, yeah. And then third is the like Minnesota. He was there well, a couple months ago. Didn't get to spend and much time in Asheville. Here when you, were down there, you said, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, did get to check out Wicked Weed, had a lunch there, but it didn't get, that was about it. Then kind of checked out the strip a little bit, but that was about all. I know. Don't you know Wicked Weed was bought out? Gosh! Come oh on, God. yeah, did you know that? <laughs> He's what like, are you doing? There receipts everywhere. There's no problem getting it. I don't know how you would spend your hard-earned money at a place like that. At all. Right, I know. They had good beer, though. I bet you, right? Pretty, pretty damn good beer. Well, I was thinking about Asheville this year because they got the beer bloggers conference <laughs> down there in August, and so that could be a nice little thing to get down there. And they're gonna have like a few of the brewery people from around the country down there for that. And uh, that'd be kind of a cool thing to go and hang out and meet some of them, do some stuff. Probably get you guys listed as part of the, the blog. And it's like 135, I think, for all three days or whatever for the conference. <laughs> but you have like VIP parties, all that kind of stuff. And then maybe we can look at hooking something up, just grab a couple hotel rooms down there or something. That yeah, could be a fun little that thing. That sounds like a terrible time. I don't know about that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I'm only, I only a step above like, 
I don't like beer. I'm just whatever. It's there, so I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I got to get into liking and then getting to loving and then maybe it's all. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the uh, first beer you guys drank for 2018? Do you remember? Nope. I got to look back at my videos. Honestly, there's a. I know there's a lot of people who get. You know, I shouldn't say get crazy because they enjoy a lot of people be like, oh, this is the last beer I'm drinking for the year. This is the first beer. I I don't really do that, whatever. Um, I can't remember. I'm sure it was a mediocre beer if I can't remember it. So Yeah. I can't remember. I have to look back at my untapped to see what it was. But um... Joe, it was the Head in the Clouds double IPA. Oh, baby, look at that. Drink a thumb. Average resurgent brewing company out of Buffalo, New York, daddy. <laughs> Mine looks like it was, it was New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve. Uh, the Sriracha Stout. No. How fine bling from Stillwater Artisanal. Oh, my Lord. Drake? Is that what's <laughs> happening right now? How fine bling. What the hell did I drink? Looks like mine was the Don Day Dio. Dio? Belgian Triple. Uh -huh. A little celebratory beer there. Pretty tasty. Yeah, it was over my brother in law's. It was kind of a last minute decision. Yeah. I actually thought my last beer of 16 was going to be a, a local uh, fresh fruit, New England style IPA. It was fantastic. But it wasn't. My, my last beer of 2016 was a uh, collaboration between Trillium and a brewery out of Toronto called Bellwoods. They're Cutting Bells, New England style double IPA brewed with Wildflower. And it was. Uh, interesting i thought it would be really great and it ended up just being solid i haven't had too many ipas in general that had wildflower honey in it so it would add like this intense like floral character to it that was really unique but also kind of just had a hard time grasping what was happening yeah. um that was the last beer i drank i don't honestly think until this i have drink drank a beer in the last couple days now i'm thinking about it so i guess it's sam adams fresh as hell is baby first beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, last beer for two the last beer for 2017 for me was CBS by Founders. Oh, you went into the night peacefully. Yep. Yeah, like you'd like to. Yeah, warm, right? Yeah, you wasn't drinking it. I told you don't mess around and do that cold, he, brother. He pulled a yeah, he drink that one more. <laughs> Put it on some space heaters for about three days, and then, then he drank it. <laughs> Joe, he's not making a bowl of anything. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I thought he was just bringing it to like a simmer, not straight boil, but just a simmer. Simmer down, simmer down. Yeah. Simmer, he simmered down the CBS. Yes, it looks he did. like Naring Gas. <laughs> Yo, you may get Naring Gas it up there. They're bringing uh, back. They're bringing back their porter. Yeah, we do get it here and there. Uh, I remember a couple years ago, uh, the Dell Shandy mm -hmm. that they had, which was their their Shandy. And I remember just taking like dirty lemonade. wasn't a fan, uh, but we get the base, and I've seen like a couple of other offers, so we probably will get that one. But well, I don't really look too much. You do not get along. Oh man, that shandy was in a word not for me, and that's more than one word, the phrase. But it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was one of those things where it was just like I, I don't mind shandies, and uh, you know, as much as, as I, I like them, sometimes I know you're not a fan of them. Uh, same thing with Rattlers, but that just was. It was. It tasted like someone just took a, a good lemonade mm -hmm. and just mixed it with really crappy beer. So maybe that's what they're going for. I don't know, but it wasn't good. Oh. For me, anyway. Again, yeah. for me. Like I said, that's just the mm, that style. I'm just not a fan of that style. I mean, you try to say yeah. it's a nice, refreshing beer. It just never really. If I have one, I might get away with it, but then it get too sweet for me. Yeah, to each their own too. Like it's it's one yeah. of those things where we all have right styles that hit and miss for us. So I, I can definitely see how for someone who doesn't doesn't want that overwhelming sweetness because a lot of times they're supposed to be refreshing, but a, a lot of times they're very sweet. And they, they do build up on the palate if you drink more than one. So I, I totally get that aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, Rod. I'm, I'm kind of the same way with the, with the Shandies. Yeah. I don't, uh, don't seek them. I'll drink one, but that's about it. If more than one is almost too much. I mean, I can yeah, definitely see why people like them that like that kind of lemonade type feel. But yeah. For about I'm a more partial. I drink about two. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm more partial to like if there's fruit in my beer, which I do enjoy, like, Tons of different fruits and all kinds of styles, but like I want something that's going to be refreshing and not overly sweet. So like a good 
you know, fruited wheat beer that just isn't crazy sweet, just has the characteristics of whatever fruit they're using, but not the sweetness of it. Or like a sour. I think fruits and sours for me, just you get everything you want from the from the uh, fruit, but the sweetness is balanced out by like the tartness or the sourness. And that's kind of what I go for. So yeah. I'm kind of with you guys. I mean, Rattlers and Shandies, I, I get why people drink them, but again, I think I think it's a good introductory uh, style for people. Like if, if you're someone who maybe can't handle bitterness in beer, or that's like one of the things that you can't get over. Right. I think Rattlers and Shandies are a good place to start. But the funny thing is, like I can enjoy rag, Rattlers, like Stiegel's Rattler. I really like that one. I just haven't found any of the Shandies that I've actually enjoyed that much. Now, maybe because many of them like the the major ones, like Lining Kugel and some of these other ones yeah. that – I didn't put too much sugar or whatever into it. Um, so I'm trying to keep the diabetes low. So mm -hmm. for <laughs> Brindley somewhere he's stalking us right now. <laughs> but the rattlers don't seem as overly sweet, which I like. Well, lighting kugels, let's be honest. And uh, by be honest, I mean I'll be honest about my opinion of it. I don't know what anyone else thinks, but lining kugel, um, a lot of their stuff just tastes fake to me. Like they're using fake flavor, you know, flavorings, like natural flavors, but sometimes it'll be artificial flavoring. And to get like a true Rattler or Shandy, like it's supposed to be like authentic fruit juice. Right. And if you've ever had like authentic fruit juice or lemonade, if you have a real good lemonade, lemonade isn't crazy sweet. A mm -hmm. real good lemonade has a nice sweetness, but it also has enough tartness to, to offset it. It's right. supposed to be a refreshing yeah. drink. So many of these places like Lion and Google, they, they just, they put so much sugar in it seems that it kind of defeats the purpose of what they're going for. And they have so many different variants of the original uh, Rattler at this point, or mm -hmm. the Shandy, right, yeah. that it's like they have to be using fake flavoring. Uh, they're putting a ton of sugar into it. I don't even look at Lina Cool anymore, anymore as being like authentic for a Shandy. I, I almost feel like it's it's just kind of BS for me. Again, I, and I that's just my own personal opinion. But every time I've ever yeah. had a Lina Cool, it's like the, you have the watermelon Lina Cool. It tastes like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. Pretty sure they're using watermelon juice in there because if so, <laughs> watermelon juice and watermelons do not taste like watermelon Jolly Rancher. Yeah. The, wor the worst part of the, the Shandy series for me from Lion Cools is the orange. Oh. Is that pretty oh, bad too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's even bad for somebody like me. You know it's bad. <laughs> well, okay. It's, it's like one of those things too. Like if you guys have had like authentic grape grape juice before, like a Welsh's or something that's real, yeah. it doesn't taste like grape Kool Aid. Yeah. It doesn't. But so many of these places use the fake, the fake flavoring, and that's what pisses me off about it. And some of the Lining Kugel, you know, it's not a, I mean, not a full knock against Lining Kugel because I, I got like a six pack, well, five pack now of the uh, the Vanilla Drift uh, Snow Drift Porter in the front. Which I like that when they offer. I needed a throwaway beer, so I grabbed a six pack of that the other night. Because uh, one of the things, as you guys know well, as Eric knows, and then Joe, once you start your channel, um, <laughs> you usually get a lot of beers that might be like one off, right? So you're using them for reviews, but you also need throwaway beers so you can just sit back and have a beer and not try to do a review on it either. So. I grabbed a six pack of that because I, I enjoy that one. I actually like some of Lina, Lina Kugel stuff. Like they're, uh, they had an Imperial series that came out a couple years ago. They had like the big Eddie Russian Imperial yeah, style and a couple other ones. Yeah, that, that was, was a good really one. good. Beers. It was. Yeah, but like it's just their Shandy line, and and I can't. I guess I can't give them too much grief because you know we're doing uh, Boston Beer Company today, Sam Adams, and they have the Traveler Shandy uh, lineup, and that's very similar to the Lina Kugel Shandies, where it's just. Again, a lot of fake flavoring and just like a lot of weird flavors that don't really jive what I think people would think are authentic fruit juices. I haven't dove part. into the Traveler series yet. I'm not. You probably don't want I've to. I've had a couple of those. I wasn't as much of a fan of those either. No, they're they're, they're very similar line of Google. Just like <laughs> I'm sure if someone handed it to you blind, Eric, and was like, "Here's a Shandy. This is line of Google's newest one," and you drank, you'd be like, "Yeah, that's totally line of Google." And then they're like, "No, it's Traveler Shandy." You're like, "I don't care because it's not for me and it's not great." <laughs> I, I was thinking so like if they they hand me a Shandy and for some reason it's kind of like Office Space, and uh, I don't know if you guys have all seen Office Space and everything, which is a great movie. Anybody ever watched that seen Office Space? It's a classic. If you haven't watched Office Space, we might be questioning. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing with your life? And what are you doing with your life? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to go quite that far, Joe. But. What are you doing with your life? No, yeah, yes, his neighbor, you know, do you have anybody at work that says happy Monday or whatever? He's like, no, nah, man. I think I'd have to kick their ass. <laughs> Anybody ever hand you and Shandy? Like, no, man. <laughs> Not to sell next beer, Maldorado, nothing but Shandy's and Rattlers. Go. 
<laughs> I, that would the face, the, the look on Rod's face, open up a whole beer mail with Rattlers and Shandies would be fantastic. <laughs> would be absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Oh, you about made me spit out my beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Rod would probably be doing with all those beers. <laughs> There's a gif out there from uh, Michael Scott on Office, basically just like, no, no, no. No, yeah. that, would, that would be me opening the bottle. <laughs> and sadly enough, that'd probably be your most viewed video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of beer, we're about to have our beer fest. Beer fest, February second and third, Duke Energy Center. About to go crazy. About to go crazy. Go go cray cray. Cray. I don't know if they have. They don't have the beer list up yet this year. They did the same thing last year. They have the one from last year. I think this is the one from last year. So last year we had over 500 beers that were there between like the, I don't know, two, 300 breweries that showed up or whatever. I think it was 200 breweries. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they have for this year. Nice. Can't go wrong with the beer fest in the middle of winter where it's probably super cold, a lot of snow. It'll warm you up. Well, yeah, yeah. But we're inside in the Duke Energy Center, so that's what I'm saying. It's that's great. You don't have to sit out there and freeze your ass off. You're inside. You're just drinking all the beer. <laughs> all the beer. <laughs> first one, first one's coming up there's people outside usually because they're so hammered. They just like sit out. It's just like yeah. you're sitting in snow. <laughs> they're warm inside though. They're very warm inside. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of um, beer <laughs> consumed in a short period of time. I think this might. Rod, be are you pouring that one again? Oh, yeah, Saturday afternoon. So that should be pretty good. We got like a crew, like 10 people that'll be pouring beers there. So hopefully, if I'm Man, over sad, down there. I can mingle a little bit. Oh, baby, Rod's gonna, gonna mingle, mingle daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna put some Gouda cheese. Yeah, you're just gonna have, he's gonna have like little packets of Gouda cheese in his pocket. <laughs> And like, do you think that stout would pair with some smoked Gouda? Yeah, that'd be you know, like that cheese guy just rolling around, just pulling it out of your pocket. Baby, I think this one would go good with Gagazola right here. <laughs> <laughs> I sell I more, I sell better sometimes than some of the guys that are actually working there. Yeah, the breweries. People start asking me all kinds of stuff. I'm like, go ask me a work there. It's like, no, he don't know what he's talking about. I mean, there's a lot of them that they, they really me, don't. It like, tells me it's good. That's like, he doesn't really know about the beer. The worst is, and, and the worst, I mean, I, I don't say this in a uh, derogatory sense or negative whatsoever, but, you know, when you have volunteers, a lot of people volunteering, volunteering out of the goodness of their heart, heart because they just, you know, want to help or whatever. But Ooh. so many times when you have events like this, they really know almost nothing about the beer. Like, they don't, they have no idea. So talking to them and asking them about certain things, you're yeah. better off pulling someone out of the crowd. They probably know more than more than person. Well, some of the volunteers, I mean, they don't know. But I mean, just some of the people from the brewery sometimes they don't even know. Like they're used to selling or going to the stores. Hey, we got mm. this. Go ahead and put it out there. Blah, blah blah. Some of them need to be trained up as well. But like, I feel if you work for the brewery, you should be right. You should be right. So sometimes they are just like you know a pretty face or whatever that goes out there. Hey, put us on your shelf type thing. So. So I get some of the people that come through and they start asking me more stuff than they're asking the people from the brewery. And then we have some of the volunteer, they come over like, this person says they like this and this. What's one you give? I'll give them an IPA, give them this, give them the porter, give them the stout or whatever. So it's kind of cool though, you know. And then people come over like, I give them a the stare down and they look at me, I look at them, they look at me, I look at them. It's like, what are you thinking? Go for it, make a move. <laughs> what do you want there? And they're like, I don't know. Maybe something a little more dark, a little more mysterious. All right, we got that. Give me some more. Give me some more. And then you have this fun banner back and forth. So our booth, by the time we're done, we're usually one of the more popular booths. Everybody's coming over. Like I've had a few of the festivals come over. I was told to come find you by so and so. They said you got the best thing. You know everybody what they want to drink type stuff. And sometimes they come to the booth. I'm like, you know what? You want to go over there. You yeah. want to go over there. They got a better one. You want to like that one? And you're just pointing. You're pointing to the Rattler's Shandy. You want to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that that's you over there, right there. Only only to the ones that wear pink pants. <laughs> <laughs> now we don't judge if they wear purple pants too. It's okay. Yeah, so it's a fun time. It's a blast, and uh, you meet some cool people. You meet some people from the brewing industry. You, you meet some of the people that are just like you know beer favorite. They like to drink beers like you do, and and uh, made some good friendships out of that too. So it's just a blast. 
Nice. Yeah, how much are the tickets for that one, Rod? Uh, let me see here. The tickets, I think they're, oh, here they are. Uh, early admission is 55. Day of the event is 65. Regular how admission many, is 45 or 55. How many breweries? 500 beers. Right? Uh, usually 500. 500 beers, so about usually 200 over 200 breweries. So you just want to bring like two or three or something. It just depends. How, how long is the event itself? Uh, well, there's a Friday night one, 6.30 to 11, and then a Saturday day session is 12 to 4.30. So four and, and a half hours. That's 6.30 to 11. Okay, so four and a half hours is pretty good. And then they give you like um, 55. You get the, If you buy the ticket for an early admission, you get 25 tickets like for samples. Uh, regular admission, you also get 25 samples for that price too. But like a eight ounce sample? Uh, I think it's like four. No, it's like eight ounce sample. Oh, I'm sorry. Regular admission is five ounce. The early admission is eight ounce. So half a pint there. Dang. But here's the thing: nobody ever gets through all their tickets. <laughs> we always got to all got extra tickets. Easy. Here, take these tickets. I can't drink anymore. Type thing. <laughs> and part of it is sometimes at the tables we stop taking them because we're like trying to get our own drink. We're like just don't take it anywhere. Sometimes people do, so they know. Yeah, in New York State, I know there's a thing too where like tickets don't matter. Um, you just there's a there's a there, at least this is what a couple going back a couple of years ago. There's a law in New York State where you have to to get an ac- alcoholic beverage at one of these fa- fests. You actually have to give someone something for the sample. It can be anything. You can give tickets. But it does nothing for the the vendors that are there. They already get paid and whatever. So it, more tickets for them doesn't equal better payoff or anything. More tickets just mean nothing. So it's like so many places are like, yeah, whatever. Put the ticket in there. Don't. It doesn't, like, it doesn't affect us. So yeah, it's, it's just a law. The ticket thing here is for the law as well because it has to be shown for something for mm-hmm. you to get the drink or whatever. Yeah, we got so. the same thing. And it's stupid. So it's like when they're like, oh, here's this festival. You get 20 free drink tickets. I'm like, yeah, no one cares. That means I get free everything because no one's no one even cares if you put the tickets in. It's just you walk up like, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, okay, good. They don't care. I, I've probably been asked a half dozen times in like five years at different fests to, for the ticket. Like no one cares. Yeah. They really don't. The, one we, the big one we have here uh, locally in Indiana, they don't have – we don't have to do the tickets. You know, we go across to Louisville and, and you do. You do have to have so the one in the end, you just buy as you drink then? No, it's uh, you pay one price and then you just drink for four hours. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There, there's, I don't know how, I, I don't know if there, in, in New York State there's like certain, the laws apply to like certain fests, like maybe of a uh, certain amount of people you have to do that. Because I've been at like smaller fests where, you no, know, just like 20, 30 bucks and all you can drink for three, four hours. So. I don't know if that's something that has maybe went to the wayside since craft beers got popular over the last five years, or if it's, uh, you know, you have to meet some kind of, uh, you know, number for, for them to actually have to have tickets in it. Uh, because I can't think of the last couple of years. I don't think I've went to an event here in New York state where I had to show anybody a ticket. So right. might've changed. I don't know. Not up to date on the laws. Ooh. It's stupid. It's one of those just arbitrary laws. Yeah. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Years ago at the uh, one in Louisville at the Capri Zoo at the local zoo, instead of doing tickets, they tried handing out like a, uh, a little placard or whatever that was uh, take a marker and mark on it. And people started figuring out that you could just lick it off, so you wasn't even showing that you had any like, marks wow. on it at all. Licking the ticket off, licking it off. Here. Hey, hey, so everybody, everybody's walking around with like zero checks on their uh, yeah. You've been here for three hours and you drank no beers. Yes, no Never beers. Never underestimate the power of drunk people. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Hey, when there's when there's more alcohol to be consumed, yes, very free. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So the oh, funny yeah, thing we'll... was, you, the funny thing was, you'd see people go and get a beer and they're walking away licking their uh, little. <laughs> Plastic card. <laughs> it's, it's right. Trying to mark off. Somebody walks in from like the 70s flashback thinking, oh, they must be getting them an acid here or something. It's, all these people are licking everything. <laughs> I don't want an acid hit. <laughs> uh, do, do you have one more? Th- I was going to recall. Oh, no, I was going to say it. for uh, the Jaguars, they play the Bills, this playoff game. Mm-hmm. The Jaguars will be serving a oh, beer. They'll be serving a yeah, beer. Of course, divided Anheuser by Bush. Anheuser Bush. So. Fucking joke. Natty Ice, baby, Natty Ice. <laughs> but it's a craft beer. Yeah. <laughs> so you, I guess they'll get their teal on if they're rooting for the Jaguars. Yeah, well, 
when the Jaguars lose, maybe they'll actually have something cool to remember it by. I don't know. I, I hope they I hope they lose. Well it's still, um, it's still long since they've been in the playoffs. I mean them in the Bills, so Yeah. Well the Bills have been a little longer. A little longer. <laughs> what you mean, yeah, that's, on, that's, on, that's on them because they've been around longer. Oh, it, oh it's totally on the Bills. <laughs> The Bills, the Bills, yeah, it's been on, it's on them. The last time the Bills were in the playoffs, it was the Music City Mirror. Oh, wow. Okay. About 2000. What? Joe? Music City Miracle. Oh, Music yeah. City Miracle. Yep. yep. The last time where uh, they uh, they went, I think it was week 17, the Bills rested their starters, and part of their starters was Doug Flutie, quarterback. Yeah. And they brought in Rob Johnson, and Rob Johnson played against like the Colts like second stringers had an awesome game. And then for the playoffs, they decided, well, we'll just, you know, Doug Flutie did a good job getting us to 10 and six, but we'll totally bench him because Rob Johnson looked awesome against second stringers. And then they played him, And then that was the game they lost. People are like, well, what was our Rob Johnson? I'm like, I think they scored like 13 points. Pretty sure Rob Johnson's kind of the blame, but uh, yeah, it's one of those things where it was like, just, it was a terrible experience overall for Bills fans. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Glad you're Not happy. Like, so they didn't have enough already. Well, and Doug Flutie was like like a local hero too because yeah. he, if you remember, you know, he won the Heisman back in the in the college football, college. yeah, 80, 86, whatever it was, eighty five, eighty six, um, and then he went to the CFL for a bunch of years and kind of reinvented himself, and then came back and Bill signed him and he came the starter and it was awesome, and then they just randomly bench him in a winning season to play the guy that they signed from the Jag- I think it was from the Jaguars, That's yeah, where Rob, Rob Johnson, Johnson came from, Jaguars, yeah, and. And they were like, "Oh, he looked good in this shitty game, so we're gonna give him the start in the playoffs." And yeah, that's typical Bills stuff, though. So <laughs> Bills logic. But anyway, yeah, it's Bills logic. <laughs> Bills have no logic, but if they did, that would be their logic. <laughs> <laughs> Bills logic is missing the playoffs all the time. Um, so the rest of the comments we have, we actually have quite a quite a bit. Uh, like I said, since we last read them, uh, Jamie from Basement Beer continues on. Ewart says, "Rolodex made of stone tablets." <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Moses. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris, Chris is trolling me. Says he laughed at that comment that said, "Joe, where's your channel?" For f sakes, um, to troll him back. Uh, I have a channel. I have fifty four subs, which is twelve less than you, and I have no videos. So get on my level. Um, <laughs> that ding ding. Yeah. Then Craig on Ken Beer Reviews uh, from Ken Beer Reviews says, Hi, guys. He has crap internet only just got online. I know he uh, – I think he went to London this week and then he's going to Portugal. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, uh, for a couple of weeks. So uh looks like he's struggling. He struggles real for Craig. Yeah, I believe his wife is from there. So they are going to visit family. So um, him and Chris exchange pleasantries. And then uh, Chris says, We missed you last week, Eric. How's the furnace? Yeah, Eric responds with three hundred fifty-five dollars later. She's running like a top. Yeah, <laughs> you could have bought a lot of beer for three hundred fifty-five dollars. Hell of a lot of beer for three hundred. <laughs> hell of a lot of Miller Lights for three hundred fifty-five. You know what I can do with three hundred dollars here with beer? Wow. Yeah, yeah oh, I could buy like maybe one and a half bottles of Samuel Adams. <laughs> Uh, and then Craig, <laughs> Craig apparently heard uh, something very, very wrongly when Rod was talking about Asheville, North Carolina, and the the blogger. He said, "Grab some hookers." Did I hear that wrong? <laughs> yeah, pretty sure you did. Pretty sure you did. <laughs> Eric responds with, "Craig, what's wrong with hookers?" <laughs> <laughs> to move away from that, Chris Chris says, uh, "Shandy, no, Radler, yes." In my opinion. Uh, Here's the thing, though, Chris. In the grand scheme of things, they're very similar. They're, they're, yeah, but he's I, like, I get, hey, like, I know Sandy, yeah. but I'll drink a Rattler. But they're, basically, they're the same thing. Here's the thing where I think you guys, um, where you it goes wrong for you guys. Shandy's and Rattlers are almost identical, but in the States, Shandy's, they start branching out to anything outside of lemonade. And, like, it, I guess in, I want to say in Germany, they use, like, lemon lime soda. So they use, like, Sprite. It's, like, half beer and half Sprite. But what Shandies do is what Line and Kugel and Traveler Shandy do. They're just like, oh, grapefruit juice. And then all of a sudden, here's this juice and watermelon and all that. That's where, where I'm talking about earlier about like the nat- the artificial flavoring and the natural flavoring. That's where I think Shandies are going wrong. They've become like this basically soda pop, more or less, drink that. That's not the intention originally of Rattlers and Shandies. But they've taken it there in the States because we have a tendency to take stuff and ruin it a decent amount. Um <laughs> Ewart says, uh, Joe likes umbrellas in his drink. Or so I've heard. I've only seen him drink beer through a twisty straw. I mean, I can't disagree with that. 
there's some really tasty mixed drinks with umbrellas in them. Yeah. And who doesn't like a twisty straw? Come on. You guys know you like twisty straws. Anyone who says they don't like twisty, sh- twisty straws, lying to yourself and to your viewers out here. Um, <laughs> Paul from PA Bruno says, all the best, brothers. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. And uh, Chris brings out a absolute gem from SNL in the Will Ferrell um, realm of things. Says, here's the rapist Paul. Sorry, I meant the th- therapist. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Trebek! Yeah, that's right that's there, Trebek. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I like that, Chris. My brother's down so far. Bum says last year he got, and he quotes, a Rod J deal trademarked on Narragansett's Autocraft coffee stout. He paid $10 for cases of 16 ounce cans. That's better than my deal. That's better than if my house, $12.99. That's better than my deal. So, so he got 24 16 ounce cans for ten dollars. Yeah, which I got 24 16 ounce cans, but it was still 29. All right, now are we having like a deal off here? Because I just... <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> potato, potato. Yeah, I don't know what's happening right now. Um, Chris jumps on the whole office space uh, stuff. Says, uh, "Did you get the memo?" And then TPS reports. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Uh, then he said they come to Rod because he's famous at the beer at the beer fest. That's right, he's famous. <laughs> he's got that. He's got that YouTube money, sons. Um, top he also 50 said, winery beer. Why not? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've only been recognized once at beer fest. We have, uh, and then he continues with Paul would get those tickets. Am I right? Uh, probably a reference about five or seven minutes ago with that. I, I don't. What tickets? Your beer fest tickets. I don't, yeah, maybe the beer fest tickets he's talking about. Uh, we have Ginger two one two two says hi. What's that? What's man? this live? What well, they, she's they? I don't know if it's a a lady or a, a fella, but they say hi. What's this live stream about? Alcohol question mark. Who is Rob Johnson? Uh, to answer your questions, this live stream is about beer and more specifically craft beer. Alcohol, yes. Who is Rob Johnson, a really crappy quarterback that the Buffalo Bills used to uh, employ and kind of ruining the Bills' uh, chances for a playoff spot for the last 18 years? He's like, kind of like a has-been that never was. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> right there. Can't say it any better. <laughs> he ain't a has-been. He was a never was. <laughs> That's Rob Johnson. Kind of like, and then, uh, he's like uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, what's the uncle's name? <laughs> uncle Rico. Yeah. Rico. Rico. <laughs> Still got it. I bet you could see those mountains all over those mountains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and then Chris says, no dot 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 cheese. <laughs> oh, baby, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, it's cheese available, baby. <laughs> blue cheese, limbo. And then Bum, Bum one last uh, comment he just posted. He says, he got several cases for that price. But on the way home, a truck cracked my windshield with a rock. Hundred dollar deductible for my replacement. Oh, oh bum! <laughs> you thought you're getting the deals of the century. Down upon you. Yeah, I would have hunt down that trunk and just I would have I would give him a very stern talk. You paid the duck, like, <laughs> so, so that happened. Which actually, mm-hmm. Kentucky, if if you got full coverage in a glass, because track the glass replacement is free. Wow. So we don't have to worry about that situation. I like it's that. Like, answer. See, so no, no, not like that in most places. And also, so there's Rod's deal. Just a step up on you, bum. <laughs> yeah. you, thought, you thought you had the man, and then he's like, hang on. Yeah. That happened. <laughs> That's, That's the a deal <laughs> on the bacon jalapeno wraps, too. So, Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> those things were good, too. Yeah, yeah they, they they sound pretty tasty. Right yeah. now, <laughs> and then uh, Chris says, vote for Pedro, uh, which is another <laughs> The reference to Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> and that's all we have for now. Uh, thanks to everyone who's watching and chatting along. I'll, I, like I said, try to get to the comments you know, every little bit. Uh, once we do the Boston uh, Boston Beer Company, like the introduction, I'll get back to the comments. We'll try to get back frequently. And then, uh, see, I had a piece here. So I'll, USA Today came out with beers Americans no longer drink. Okay. So uh, number 10. If my screen stops messing up here. Number 10 was Ice House. I know that. Oh, I know a lot of people who still drink Ice House. So they had Ice <laughs> House at number 10. Then they had Miller Lite at number 9. 
Liar! Liar! <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they said they didn't say everybody. They didn't say everybody, Eric. But what they're looking exactly. at is how the sales are shrinking on these people, essentially, yeah. right? So number eight is Bud Light, which is still the most sold beer in the country, I believe. In the world, is it? Is it in the world? In the world. Uh, definitely in the country. I thought it was the world, but it's dwindling, but it's still number one. Number seven is Bush, so I guess the guy on the stream is not saving up too much. Most <laughs> <laughs> number six is a Lance favorite, Natty Ice. Well, I, I feel like Lance is single-handedly keeping them afloat at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Budweiser. Number four, another one that Lance likes, Natty Light. Yeah, again, I mean, just the whole Natty line. <laughs> Pretty sure Natty, Lance Natty. probably owns like 80% of the company at this point. Number three, Miller High Life. Number two, Keystone Light. Better beer face. And number one, Bud Light Lime. So Bud Light line, their sales changed from 20 th 2011 to 2016 is down 35.5%. Well, so barrel shipped in 2016, 1 million. Now, now, is that just straight Bud Light lime? Because here's the thing with that. With it's the Limeritas coming to the forefront, I see a lot of people who drank Bud Light lime. They're, they're not beer. They're, like, they're malt beverage alternative. I, I know, but I'm saying a lot of people who probably stopped drinking that probably went to that line. Yeah, well, this is just a Bud Light lime. Well, I can see it because they're like they they have so many, um, not just beer, just drinks in general. Because they, I don't want to say they diversified, but there's so much more of Anheuser Busch and Miller products to drink. Plus, you got all six thousand plus breweries out there for people to to try and to yeah. drink. <laughs> so I can see why the the sales have gone down. So they said to identify the beers Americans no longer drink twenty four seven Wall Street, which is the name of the firm. Review shipment volumes provided by beer marketers and sites for all brands with more than 1 million barrels shipped in either 2011 or 2016. So the change is 2016 versus 2011. Yeah, so it's the five years. And then in, a lot, in five years, craft beer has become <laughs> extremely strong. Yeah. A lot of those uh, numbers do not surprise me. And I also just want to say, Eric, when you said diversify, I was laughing because I was thinking of the Chappelle, Chappelle show sketch. Diversify your bonds. You need to diversify your bonds. <laughs> what, what is it? What I decided to enter the well, series. Well, starting to giggle. I'm like, why is he laughing? Yeah, yeah and step to the mother effing woo. Oh, man. That's such, <laughs> such a great sketch. Oh, God. So, uh, oh, God. Yeah, no, it wasn't what you were saying. It was just in my mind where you said, I don't want to say diversify. I'm like, diversify your bonds. That's what <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, we got another beer festival about to come up too, and this is actually one at a time, Rod. Rod, one at a time. This is another one that's coming. Next week. <laughs> it's actually a mini festival, but it's at Jungle Gems that we have here. And Jungle Gems, if you're not familiar with them, which you probably aren't, because you're in different parts of the country, it's like one of the top five. They said you're buying places in the country, and they're having a big barrel bourbon festival next week. So, yeah, well, that sounds. You know, Rob's got to go to that. Yeah, no, you, you have to go to that. One of my buddies up here said he's thinking about going next week. So. Oh, you better go, oh, dude. That's, that's... You, you drive it? Because if you drive it, I'm bringing it. Yeah, you drive You, you uh, DD. Settle down there. Settle down there. I'll get to PSA. Um, <laughs> as soon as I said DD, uh, freaking Eric's going to kick down the door. Just be like, if you think you're going to drink and drive, I'll kill you myself before it actually happens. Yeah. <laughs> We missed your PSA last week, by the way. That's on us. We did. Yeah, totally yeah, we missed that there. one. Ball yeah, was. I mean, we, we read your list. I see. I see. You like the index card too? No, that was fantastic. That was like old school, old school, old school. <laughs> Appreciated it. I like that it was sideways too. Playing and controlling. Let's see here. But yeah, especially for, for like a barrel age fest, like you know all those beers are gonna be like over eight percent. It's not like you're gonna be like, Oh, I'll slow down and go drink this, you know, four and a half percent log or fruit beer. But no, not everything you drink is probably crazy, crazy big. Get about an hour into it and you're done. So definitely gotta bust out those DDs. So I was looking at this piece here that says four beer accessories for some extra drinking fun. One of them is a toast leather pint class cuff. Mm. So kind of put this leather pint leather thing around your. Why the hell would you need that? This sounds like a terrible list yeah, already. The office space. I think I might have to kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how you usually drink beer? You pour it into a glass or drink it straight from the vessel. Done. <laughs> Pretty easy. I don't know what else is happening. 
the Stubby Strip Original. That does not sound like anything for beer, but it helps you carry your beer from one place to the next. Are you sure this is beer news right now, Rod? Beer Belly Stout Drinking System. It makes it like you had a beer belly and you have the hose you can drink your beer through. What if you already have a beer belly? Then what? <laughs> More of a beer belly. And the Kinkajou Bottle Cutter. So you can actually cut your bottles if you want to do something else with them. You know, some people design casting, one people design one person design candles out of beer bottles. They'll cut well, it in I, half and they'll use the base for stuff. And there, there's a really popular um over street fight breaks out, you know, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are making like glasses out of them. There's a there's a really popular me, uh, son. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever heard of kegworks.com, but they're like quite popular. They homebrew stuff and all all the they're actually located here in Buffalo. They used to have a retail brick and mortar store, but they closed it down last year. Um, but they used to have available like stone did that where they would take the, like you could get like a stone, like Russian Imperial or is it Imperial Russian stout bottle. That was a glass. Now they actually, you know, did the whole nine on it and it was, it was cool, but it was like, I don't know. I don't really want to drink out of that. I guess. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It'd be cool to have like as a background or just like in wherever you, if you have a bar downstairs or something, that'd be cool as like a piece, but like to actually use them. I just drink out of regular like glasses. I don't know. <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird situation there. Yep. And then uh, you want to run down your Sam Adams stuff? I don't really want to. Here's what I'm gonna say about <laughs> Sam Adams. I'm gonna I'm gonna and I say this every week, I'm gonna keep this short. And I and most weeks I do, but like last week is kind of longer. But uh everybody, if you've drank craft beer, I'd say like ninety eight percent of the people out there had know about Sam Adams know what they provide and know all that stuff so keep that with in mind as i run down the history and the year-round beers and our opinions i'm not going to de delve too far into everything just because i mean they are like the most well-known craft brewery in the united states yes yingling is technically number one in sales and technically a craft brewery but sam adams is like the og a lot well not the og i mean i guess you have sierra nevada and like uh, anchor and whatnot anchor is like the original right it's it's the yeah. of the current uh like the last 40 50 years but everyone knows sam adams so we're we'll, not we'll saying tax and beer sam adams uh we can i mean i can we can pull that sketch up for everyone <laughs> it gets you drunk bitch it gets you drunk bitch <laughs> yeah it's, that's actually probably a better sketch than what i'm about to do but uh <laughs> yeah so sam adams the Boston Beer Company, like everyone thinks Samuel Adams is the Boston Beer Company actually has a whole bunch of beer uh, companies under its umbrella now. Uh, but Samuel Adams was the original, like, I guess, um, branding under the Boston Beer Company. And uh, it was founded in 1984 by Jim Cook. A lot of people say Jim Koch. It's actually pronounced Cook. They also uh, say Cock sometimes, too. Yeah, well, no, he's a cock. Oh, he's he's, he's, but here's the thing. <laughs> There's the, the, both of the both of the cooks, both Jim and Greg, and Greg Cook is the the owner and founder of uh, Stone Brewing. Right, They're both Cox. It's just that's not how their last name is pronounced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they 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 was founded originally in 1984 by Jim Cook. Um, they named it after they named the Sam Adams brand after obviously the founding father Samuel Adams, uh, who was a revolutionary patriot. But watch out. Yeah, everyone knows who Sam Adams is. For the most part, if you know anything about U.S. history. Uh, and then in 2012, they introduced uh, Angry Orchard Cider. So if you see Angry Orchard, Boston Beer Company. Not a lot of people know that, actually, unless you're you know, well-vested into craft beer and kind of know you know the background of these places. Like, if you go to a store, I don't think too many people, uh, if you're just a regular beer shopper or regular cider purchaser, you don't know that Angry Orchard is owned by Boston Beer Company, but totally are. Well, totally are. Um, they also, again, like I said, Traveler Shandy, they own that as well. Um, so something to, I guess, know about them. Uh, so again, they originally were founded in 1984, the first beer, Samuel Adams Boston Lager, 4.8%, uh, Vienna style lager or Amber lager, but it's technically Vienna style lager. I guess the, the Cook family, uh, he's actually a sixth generation, um, uh, sixth generation Cook member that brews beer like the original uh family recipe was for the lewis cook lager and that's what they they founded the samuel adams boston lager on um he actually worked at a consulting group 
uh, because he <laughs> he was actually quite intelligent. He still is to this day, obviously, Jim Cook. Yeah. Uh, he, he has a bunch of degrees from Harvard, uh, but he decided he wanted to get into brewing beer, and he invested $100,000 of his own money, uh, took on some classmates and other colleagues from the consultant group, and they ended up forming a Boston Beer Company and went at it. Um, he uh, he decided to name the uh, the flagship beer Samuel Adams because um, uh, I don't know he's a big fan of Sam Adams and uh, he in inherited a brewing tradition from his father. Um, he invented that beer, created that beer, and it actually won best beer in America at the Great American Beer Fest. Now, for those of you who have went to the Great American Beer Fest and know about the Great American Beer Festival nowadays, it's huge. It's crazy. It's nuts. But it's back then... Beer Festival. Yeah. Yeah. But back then in 19... Uh, I think it was 1985, there was only 93 <laughs> national and regional beers at the Great American Beer Fest. To just show you how, how far that festival and craft beer in general has come in the last 33, 32, 33 years... Yeah, 93 total beers, but it won best beer at that. And uh, the first place it ever was put on tap was Doyle's Cafe in Jamaica Plain in Boston. Um, he initially uh, rented, because um, they originally brewed it in, in Boston, but they uh, they needed more capacity to brew the beer. So they uh, actually brewed the beer at the Pitt Pittsburgh Beer Company. And for those of you who know about the Pittsburgh Beer Company, like Bum, they are actually known for their Iron City brand of beers. Mm -hmm. which pretty popular in uh, Pittsburgh. Um, as you know, they demand kept on going up and up and up. Um, they decided that they needed to uh, get another place. So they went to the hood pole or so, sorry, hootie pole, hootie pole, shaling. That's how you pronounce it. Hootie pole shaling. I actually looked this up because I'm like, how the hell do you say this? But Cincinnati's hootie pole shaling brewery, uh, brewery uh, which was purchased by the Boston beer company in 1997, um, they decided they uh, needed you know, more space, so they went to the. It's weird that they went to Cincinnati, but they did because it, it was a uh, Hootie Pole is actually an older brand. Like I've, I actually went and looked at some. They, if you go to YouTube, you can see some of the older. And I mean, you live there, Rod, so you know yeah. about Hootie Pole and stuff. It's an yeah, older beer brand. It's just called Hootie, by the way. Yeah, it's Hootie, but yeah, the, the actual name of the brewery was Hootie Pole shaling but yeah hootie is the if you go look at the old uh the old commercials they're pretty hilarious actually because they're you know back 30 years ago it's pretty funny but uh they decided to buy that brewery and uh turn it into one of their own and uh they have been producing beer there and they're original and they also uh bought a brewery in the brenningsville uh pennsylvania area um and the lehigh valley and i believe that was in 2007 so they have three main breweries that employs over 1300 employees in boston cincinnati and brainsville pa and uh that's i think the vast majority of the beers brewed in the cincinnati area though like a lot of people think it's the original boston one but i think most of it's in that the hootie the hootie brewery yeah, hootie we, do the blowfish. Cincinnati. we actually have a special cincinnati 513 they do see see that's that's actually cool to know um which is they should do that right for the local breweries i feel like um they uh you know they're they're well known as <laughs> one of the big players in the whole renaissance of craft brewery over the last 30 years right like they they are well he's yeah, I mean, cook pretty much pressed it right so he's got, yeah like, the godfather mm -hmm. <laughs> um it says on Wikipedia, but again, like I said, it, sa it says that a lot, two, two thirds of all their beers are produced at the Brainsville, PA uh, location. So actually, I got that backwards. So maybe not Cincinnati area. It, it is, it is the actual PA one. But I, I think of the three, the least amount is produced in the Boston area, which again is weird. Uh, and then again, in 2012, the Angry Orchard, uh, the, the cider. Uh, that they produced uh, was actually out of Cincinnati as well. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say we get a lot of that around here. That might be produced here, so yeah. Yeah, that is based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, again, not much to say out of the Boston Beer Company. We, we, you know, if you have had craft beer, you've probably had at least Boston Lager at one point. They are everywhere. Uh, you know, Yingling is number one. Boston Beer Company is number two. I think if you had any state in America, you can get Boston Lager. You can definitely get most of their uh, probably seasonal offerings. You've probably had them if you drink craft beer. You know what they're all about. Uh, they're, they're, they're a good brewery. I mean, a lot of people will crap on Sam Adams, but the simple fact of the matter is for their price point and their availability, they make some decent products, okay? They, they do. 
Um, and it's not for everybody. And I'm sure a lot of people talk about how it's changed in the last 30 years and stuff. And maybe for some people it has, but they've been producing, you know, quite, they're probably as close to a macro breweries you can get nowadays with consistency. You mm -hmm. don't really pick up a Boston lager in one area that's vastly different than one in another. So um, they are the kings of craft beer. For the most part, except for Yingling. Here's the thing about Yingling: does uh, Yingling? I just I know they're a they're they're technically a microbrewery, but I have always have a hard time just understanding that they still are a microbrewery. But they are Yingling totally is. You still meet the definition. Yeah, they meet the definition, but their beers are more macro based. I would say. Yeah, um, I mean they see their competition being the big three. You know they're trying to do that, but their barrel count isn't there, and they're still using the original type ingredients and they still got like you know when you get into like a yingling it's not just a yingling because there are different parts of the country where you're seeing stuff but you got the yingling you got the yingling porter you got the black and tan you got these other different versions they're actually making so nobody i don't know unless you're like kind of in that pa area you're really not seeing a full line in a lot of places but no when you go yeah, back no. like where bum is you can see all the stuff they do you're like you know what they do have a lot of crap qualities from all the different stuff they put together no they do they really do. I agree. I mean, you, you know, Yingling makes a lot of different beers, and but I mean, everyone knows them for their main beers. So it's like one of those things where it's like you don't understand that they have other micro beers or craft beers under it. But it's like they are the number one craft brewery in America and the all oldest. I, all I know is when they when they came to Ohio, we used to go back east. People were bringing Carlos and Yingling back. They weren't bringing back Carlos or Anheuser Busch or any of the other ones. But Yingling, people are like, give me, give me, give me a case while you're back there. <laughs> so they had that popularity with a lot of the beer drinkers, especially more that might be more craft oriented now. Yeah. Um. Okay. So with, with Sam Adams, usually I go into in depth about like year round seasonal shit. Here's the thing. a lot of beers. So this one say yeah, just, <laughs> they brew a lot of beers, like a lot, like on a scale of one to a lot too many. Um, it's they. <laughs> They just brew a lot of beers. But at this point, everyone knows Boston Lager. It's their flagship. It's a Vienna Lager, 4.8%. Uh, everyone has had it. I'm going to say everyone's had it. I know I'm wrong, but everyone's had it. Just everyone's had it. Um, and that's like their flagship. Uh, they have a bunch of different beers. I will, I will, uh, I guess, mention like some of the specialty or more well-known ones. Rebel IPA, which I believe uh, Todd is drinking tonight, is like their first foray into like an actual like New Age IPA when it came out like five years ago. It was a West Coast style IPA, which were big back then. Now there's New England style, but back then West Coast was big. And I remember they bring, brung it, uh, they, they, they brought it out and they were like, oh, this is good. Yeah. It's just like it's a good introductory beer for West Coast style IPAs. It's, it's solid. It's everywhere. Now they have six billion different variants of it. Who knows anymore? There's like it. They then they come out with like a rebel. I'm looking on the website here. They came yeah. out with like a rebel variety pack where they had a grapefruit one, which is Rod is drinking an anytime one. The rebel rouser double IPA, which I think one of you have that one here too. You have that there too. So you know they've they, it's a whole now a line. They came out with the rebel IPA. They turned it into a, a line. session one possibly as well. Yeah, it's rebel anytime session IPA. Yeah. So you know they they stepped up their game there. Uh, um, they also have uh, Samuel Adams Light, which. I don't think I've ever had Sam Adams Light. I don't think I have either. <laughs> I know. I remember. I can, it. I can get it by a twelve pack. Okay, I because I I remember it. I remember seeing it back. This is over five years ago, but I never picked it up because I'm like I don't really want to drink Sam Adams Light. It doesn't make sense to me, but you know, <laughs> for the calorie counters. Yeah, for the cal for the calorie counters. <laughs> um, um, Samuel Adams Utopia, which is again, I mean, look, it's <laughs> technically a beer. But it's really not a beer, but it is a beer, but it's not maybe, but not really, but it's kind of, but not really. We have to drink um, a one ounce at a time, they say. So yeah, it's basically a spirit, okay. Yeah. But it is it or is technically a classic, one night. Yeah, or I mean, if you're a crazy alcoholic like Todd apparently is, you drink the entire bottle one night, <laughs> and then you don't remember what happened in the last twenty four hours because that's what happens. <laughs> No, but that that's a beer that I will say this. If you ever have a chance to try an ounce of it, if it even for like 10, 12, 15 bucks at a at a, at a uh, bar, give it a go just because it's better than spending the $250 you have to spend in the US to try a bottle of it. Um, our Canadian friends, uh, this came out uh, in Canada a couple of years ago and they were selling at LCBOs, I think for $115 Canadian. If you do the conversion, that's about $85, $90 American. So for some reason, our Canadian oh, friends wow. to the north got it for about 
a third as much as we pay for it, which actually one of my one of my coworker friends, her husband got it for like eighty dollars out here. Yeah, well, that's that must be the Rod, oh, really? like, Rod J like deal in Cincinnati. Sure, I sold it on Amazon for about two. So yeah. it's a good beer. Don't get me wrong; like I've had it multiple times. It's a really good beer. It's it's extremely tasty, especially if you like like barrel aged big beers. It's fantastic. Is it two hundred fifty dollars? Two hundred dollars? Fantastic. No, there's not. I don't think there's a beer no. that could cost that much. That would be that'd be fantastic. You can get top of the line like scotches and crazy stuff for that price. So to pay that much for a beer, hmm, I would say no. But to try it once at an ounce, just to give it a go, say you had it, see what it's all about. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a great beer. So uh, I'd be curious if anyone in the comments watching this after or now has ever had it, just to see what they think. Um, for many years, they uh, produced their Triple Bock too. Actually, I have a 1997 Triple Bock from Sam Adams in my cellar, courtesy of Matt of Massive Beer Reviews, another fellow beer tuber, a uh, friend of mine. And uh, he he gave it to me. He was like, hey, try it out sometime. I'm like, I don't ever want to open this. Um, <laughs> but they produced the Triple Bock, and I believe it was brewed. I want to say it was brewed with maple syrup. Yeah, maple syrup was added in the brewing process, and they produced it in 94, 95, and 97. Uh, but I think there's a lot of issues with it, too. Like, uh, a lot of them got infected and turned to, like, pure soy sauce and all kinds of different sort of things. But if you get an actual good one from a batch that didn't have any issues, apparently, like, right now, 20 years later, it's pretty fantastic. So if I ever have a channel, which probably not, I would probably review that at some point, you know, just to be like, I can get this and no one else can, so I'm an idiot. Um, what else they have? They have, uh, you know, their seasonal beers. You've seen the, like, I don't think they call it Winter Classic Pack anymore, but it's the winter. Seasonal pack is, I think, awesome. They have the Harvest Pack, the Spring Pack, the Summer Pack. They have, um, they, they like, they just came out with a uh, new pack. I don't know if any of you guys seen it on your shelves yet, but the, the Lager Pack. It's like the American Lager. Uh, what the hell? Yeah, I didn't look too much at it, but I saw it out there. They have like a coffee. Um, let me see. The American Craft Loggers Variety Pack. It has the Boston Lager, the Freshest Hellas, the Noble Pills, which honestly, Noble Pills is like one of the best Pilsners I've ever had from the U.S. Just throwing out there. They have a Keller beer in there. They have a coffee black lager. Mm -hmm. Sounds intriguing from Santa's. And a smoked lager. I actually saw it. I did not pick it up because I don't know. I just. One thing about the Sam Adams variety packs, I always threw two Boston lockers in there. Why? Because, you know, you've never had it before, right? No, you, we've all had it before. Just give us like three of the others or throw something else in there. You I'll never put, understand. You put their flagship in there, right? I, I know, it. but it's, that, yeah, and I'll never understand it because, look, I, we've all had Boston lager. You can get it everywhere. Why do you have to throw two of those in the pack? We know <laughs> what it tastes like. Around. They got to do something with them. <laughs> I guess so. I. Son of a bitches. Um, a bunch of beer laying around. Just give them away. They actually, and uh, I just saw this on the website. Uh, for those of people I, I, I have not seen any reviews, but they're going to come out with New England style IPA. Um, this is actually going to be a beer that they're going to release nationally in 2018. New England style IPA brewed with Galaxy, Simcoe, Mosaic, Citra, and Cascade. Going to come in 16 ounce cans like all the cool places do. 6.8% alcohol by Vine, 35 IBUs. And uh, yeah, so keep an eye for, out for that. We'll see how how they do with the New England style, right? I mean, I hope it's good, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean... There are like literally, there are so many, so many. Well, I think it makes beers. sixty plus a year now, or something. Yeah, so, yeah. I could sit here and talk about all their seasonals and everything, but the simple fact of the matter is, they brew so many beers. A lot of you can get them. I, it's not really worth covering. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean that's Maybe that's cherry wheat, right. Yeah, the cherry cherry wheat's probably one of their more well known <laughs> medicinal like beers. Yeah, and they want some yeah, Robitussin or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but want some Tussin, baby. Put some Tussin on it. Yeah, if Chris Rock, man, put some Tussin, <laughs> rub the Tussin in there. Um, the one cooler thing that I've uh, well, there's some controversies uh, based on the Wikipedia where in the '90s when they were producing their cranberry lambic, which I've had because they actually included it one year in the Winter Classics pack, so they made a cranberry lambic and. Uh, a lot of people, including the famed uh, beer critic writer Michael Jackson, he uh, actually kind of um, shit on them a little bit, called it a misleading name because, as you guys know, how lambics are produced, you don't produce them in you produce them in Brussels. You don't really no one really calls it a beer lambic outside of Brussels and, and Belgium in general. So it's like one of those things where 
to call it cranberry lambic is ridiculous. And uh, their uh, senior brewer actually retorted, I wouldn't consider it mislabeling. Whenever I've served the uh, cranberry lambic, I've always been really upfront about it. Is it a true lambic beer made in that region in Belgium? No. Does it taste like one? Yes. So it's our sort of homage to the style without the pain and agony of it. So they really, for I guess ever since the 90s, people have kind of poo pooed on that because, you know, honestly, it's not a cranberry lambic. It's a cranberry fruit beer, or a cranberry wild ale, a cranberry sour, but it's not a lambic. But to this day, whenever they released it, when I picked it up, it's like cranberry lambic on the label like three years ago. So still using it, apparently. I don't know if they actually brew it anymore, but yeah. yeah. Um, so that's one of the controversies they've had. Um, that I, I like, I remember them talking about. And the last little note for them is that they have been officially named the official beer of the Boston Red Sox starting in the 2018 season. So, uh, they replaced Budweiser and it's an eight year deal that will last through the 2025 season. Uh, they get a signage and a Sam roof deck there. Um, yeah. It says uh, it, it also allows the use of the Red Sox logo for marketing purposes and uh, runs Red Sox related contests with tickets to games. So I won't be surprised even nationally if you see a Boston uh, logger or some kind of pack where they have a bunch of Red Sox logo all over it, whatever, you know, or most likely regionally or locally, but you might see that even nationally. So um, that's like the last news item of Boston yeah. lager of the Boston beer company. And that's really all I got for them. I mean, again, if you really want to know more about the Boston beer company, you can go to their website. Cause they, you know, they're all high and mighty about themselves um, on their website. You know, yeah. Jim, Jim cook tells a fantastic uh, one-sided story. No doubt. Um, go to Wikipedia. They have a lot of information, but if you've been drinking craft beer, you know about Sam Adams. It's not really worth talking about too much but what is worth talking about is our own personal opinions on here because we all have great takes on everything at all times and that's a, <laughs> that might be a little bit of a lie but uh you know if you're probably watching the show you know everyone has an opinion if you guys have opinions on what we're going to talk about throw them in the comments we'll read them uh in fact before we get to this i will read the comments i hear that paul is blowing them up <laughs> ridiculously crazily all right so we have oh my god you weren't lying holy crap Okay, so uh, Bum says Rod always wins. <laughs> Not always. Redbeard, Redbeard says Ahoy Hoy. Don't ever do that again, Redbeard, but hello. Um, <laughs> but it's Redbeard. He expects to say Ahoy Hoy, right? <laughs> that's that's true. Uh, Chris calls him Pixelman because last night on the Beer Analysis 101 and then they had an after show, uh, he uh, had a really pixelated um, – uh, his screen was super pixelated from his, his, I guess his connection wasn't all that good. And he was very, very displeased with it. So he's now known as Pixelman. So he's Pixelman all the way. Um, Paul continues. And by continues, I mean, here we go. It says, I am back. Do they make a date cutter? A date cutter? Are we talking about the bottle cutter? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's, I think that's what he's talking about. <laughs> and then he said, it's a temporary use. I date less than twice, strangely. You don't know a weird situation, brother. PA for the win, and it's still shit. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll, go to Bum, we'll go to Bum real quick. And Bum says, you know, Samuel Adams was the first two-sport athlete. He was a brewer and a patriot. Actually, those references are no longer on the label, so my joke really doesn't work anymore. I see what you did there, Bum, and I appreciate it. <laughs> We all appreciate it. Um, and Paul says, you never know what you can do with your daddy's money. I, I, I assume I'm referring to Jim Cook. Um, he said, 1985, Matt from Massive Beer Reviews was there drinking all the aged wells. <laughs> uh, Chris says, sounds like Joe had to go bad to school to get this in, 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 info. But I think he meant back to school. What did he like, say? It sounds like Joe had to go bad to school to get this info. I think mean, he meant back to school. And maybe Rodney did danger feel his way at that day. Um, Paul, Paul says, yeah, Iron City, or as my parents say, Iron Shirty. And then he corrects himself and says, Iron Shitty, which is what he was originally going for. Um, Bum says, I have a full Iron City bottle with a Sam Adams cap from the late 90s. That's pretty freaking oh, cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe if you had a channel bump. We would know about it. Bum probably has a lot of good. 
Doesn't matter. The guy with no channel sh shitting on the guy who also doesn't have a channel. What would you say? What were you saying, Ron? I said Bob probably has some pretty cool stuff in his man cave. Yeah, you see a lot of the stuff when he's on Jody's uh, channel behind him. He has a lot of cool memorabilia from all kinds of crazy stuff from sports and old beers and everything. Um, Paul said something about the Nazis that I just won't repeat. Um, we have Chris who says, oh boy. And then <laughs> Paul finishes with the hashtag truth hurts. Again, not reading that comment. Uh, Bum says a lot of Angry Orchard is produced at the old Rolling Rock plant in Latrobe, PA, now City Brewing. Good yeah. good information, Bum. Wikipedia failed me in that regard, so F Wikipedia, apparently. I don't know if anyone really cares about Angry Orchard in general. Ciders are all right, but they're ciders. I'm not a huge fan. I mean, I've actually been drinking some ciders more recently from where Eric's up in Michigan, and that Blake's Hard Cider is so much better than Angry Orchard. Mm -hmm. What who is who's better than Angry Orchard? Lake's Hard Cider. It's out of Michigan. Oh, I, I like Woodchuck. They were really good. I got another one I picked up the other day. El Chavo, El Chavo, or something. As far as the national ones, I like Woodchuck. I don't know if you guys get Woodchuck. Yeah, I, I, like woodchuck like better than Angry I like the green. Yeah, we get them. As, and I just said we get them. I'm not a big fan of them, but they're out. yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that is not bad though. Eric. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I actually like their their the seasonals they do. Like they did a pumpkin one with pumpkin season it was really good woodchuck. Um a lot of their regular stuff's really sweet though. So I really like the pear. Yeah. Uh, he maybe he liked the pear. Pear side of that. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck uh, <laughs> Well, if we're applying this to Paul, he a lot because he say <laughs> stuff like hashtag stop talking logic, Joe. I don't I never talk logic, so that's easy for me. <laughs> Hashtag Joe Macro Apologist. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's in reference to me apologizing for gangling. Um, hashtag Whore Joe Whore. All right. Hashtag a lot Joe a lot. Hashtag go get them, Joe. Um, Earth says, anyone try their New England style IPA yet? Sam Adams, which it was probably before I mentioned it, but no. And uh, like I said, I it said it was like limited in 2017, but national in 2018. So I'm sure once it starts hitting the markets, everybody, Eric's going to yeah, have a review. Rod's going to have a review. I'm not going <laughs> to have a review. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul says something appropriate. Hashtag Joe, you're fat like me. Correct. Yeah, that's, a, that's just a, the facts here, Paul, are, I mean, we're looking for fake news. So, I mean, if you were like Joe, you're skinny like me, that would have been better. Um, Chris says, Oktoberfest is my personal favorite. Great food pairing beer. Hey, man. Paul and I. Oktoberfest is actually not bad at all. Yeah, it's pretty good. At Paul, Paul and I did a blind taste test between four German Oktoberfest and four American Oktoberfest. Sam Adams won the blind taste test. So, I'll never say anything bad about that beer because they won a freaking blind taste test of Oktoberfest. That would just be me being a hypocrite. But. I think it's one of their more popular beers for a reason. Honestly, it's pretty solid. No doubt. Um, he says, hashtag F Canada. That seems a little bit rough. Uh, he says he loves you, Chris, after that. So, you know, just joking around. Uh, now they're kissing and whatnot. It's good times. Um, Paul says not to look at the comments. <laughs> Too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> Hillbilly Wine shows Oops. up in midst of this uh, absolute 100% shit show in the comments and says, hello, fellas. Here to relax and enjoy the conversation. Cheers. Listen, Yo, this is on us, poss possibly Paul, but if you're not enjoying yourself, I get it. But hopefully you are, Hillbilly White. <laughs> As in for Hillbilly, I don't know if he knows or not, because he comes up to Cincinnati once in a while. Mm -hmm. I think in March is where they're going to have the big wine festival at Duke Energy Center. So we had the beer fest in February. The big wine fest is in March. Did you get your invitation to the wine fest, considering you're a top 50 wine reviewer on YouTube? I did not. Oh, wow. Come on, <laughs> Hillbilly's on that list. You're obligated to go, right? Rob? Well, Hillbilly actually reviews and drinks wine. You, on the other hand, <laughs> not not really sure I've ever seen a wine review or anything. Just saying. <laughs> Bum Bu says Utopius is one of the few Sam Adams that he's never tried. Well, Bum, if you ever happen upon it in the Pittsburgh area, um, give it a go. Like I said, I wouldn't pay probably more than ten. You look at it like this. If it's, I think it's twenty four ounces. The, the or 25 ounces the the actual vessel that it's in so if you can get it for like ten dollars an ounce or like 12 bucks it's worth a go but like i wouldn't pay an exo like if there's like 20 dollars an ounce or something I'd i feel like my response to someone offered me utopia it would be like little john what what yeah what? yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would go from what to okay to yeah like that would <laughs> 
Um, Paul says you're echoing Lambic all over Joe. That's gross. Um, and your language is inappropriate. All appropriate is in the channel. <laughs> Freaking Paul. Uh, Bum, Bum says all through the 90s, I prayed for Cranberry Lambic to disappear from the winter variety packs. My prayers were finally answered about 10 years ago. Uh, I don't know, Bum, because about five years ago, I picked up the Cranberry Lambic in the winter variety pack. And guess what? It's not in there anymore, but I, it, it was about five years ago that I remember it happening. But, yeah, um, I didn't think it was terrible. It just wasn't a Lambic. Yeah. Um, Chris says, this is almost as terrible as Canadian beer news, Joe. Uh, when you mean terrible, do you mean amazing? Because that's what the Canadian beer news is. You watch the Albino Rhinos, BDU, you watch it for the Canadian beer news. Let's be honest. Um, Earth laughs at that, which I, it was a pretty good comment. See, like that's a trolling <laughs> comment that I appreciate. I appreciate that, Chris. Um, Redbeard says, I just now saw the Pixel Man stuff in the 101 chat, LOL. Yeah, you need to get your shit together, Redbeard. Can't be pixelated. Off that dial that up, son. Off that dial up. He's like, I spent way too much money to be pixelated. <laughs> I don't know how much you spend, but yeah, no one deserves to be pixelated. Max Headroom. And then, what's that? Max Headroom. Yeah, Max Headroom. Yeah, basically, that's what he looked like. <laughs> Just uh, with a huge ginger beard. Yeah. Um, not a ginger beer, a ginger beard. Um, Chris finishes with hashtag Joe J. Oh. I will always say. No pray for Joe's tonight. Peter. No, no prayer. No, that's long. long gone. <laughs> that's <laughs> yesterday's news. Yeah, we I'm a lost cause. They understand. Um, so it's we're finished this finish this entire segment up with uh our personal opinions on Sam Adams from when we first had him to uh what our overall feelings on the brewery are, our favorite beers, least favorite beers, beers you want to try. So we'll start with Eric and we'll start with um we'll actually end the whole overall opinion so we'll go with what's your favorite beer and least favorite beer and what beer you want to try in the future from sam adams eric um uh, my favorite beer is probably like i said in last uh last week's chat which <laughs> i i gave the nice little um index card for was the oh sweet <laughs> was their cream stout i really like their cream stout i think that's well to me it's one of the best beers that they make um and a, a solid one's obviously boston lager i'm i'm a lager fan as it is so I'm always going to come back to Boston Lager every time. Um, probably one of the beers I would – I want to try Utopias. I'm, I will say that. I do want to try that beer, even though for as expensive as it is, I, like you said, maybe an ounce or two and then try it and see what happens. And no beers that you really dislike at all, though? Everything's been at least decent from them? They're, yeah, decent. About, the, the, really the only – the beer I really couldn't stand was the, the Rebel Rouser. Okay, the double IPA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, that back back when I was there, they had they had the session rouser, the regular rouser, and then the double rouser. That's been goodness, I can't remember how long ago that was. Probably two, at least two years ago. Gotcha. Or maybe it's the Rebel. Maybe it's the, just the Rebel IPA. Maybe you'll have to revisit them. Yeah, I might have to. Oh boy, that could be a little <laughs> Saginaw channel, like dude, like the 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 uh, session, the regular, and the double. Go to town. Yeah. Might be a good, yeah, good little thing to do. The double I like, just the other two that I was like, yeah, not really. Gotcha. Uh, how about you, Rod? Uh, favorite, least favorite? What do you want to try? Um, uh, Samuel Adams is actually not a brewery I usually seek out much from. Oh, well, we got a hater already. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, I mean, Utopia, I probably try at some point. Might be one of the things, but outside of that, they're. They're like an okay brewery and they're good, but they're like there's nothing motivational about them to me. I think the uh, I was looking back on some of the beers I've had from them. So two of the top beers I've had actually there's three beer. Well, there's a couple beers there, but um, the Winter Lager, their old Fezziwig, I've had that before. Um, the Latitude Forty Eight IPA, the cherry chocolate box are kind of like the ones that are showing up at the top of the list. I do like their cold snap, but like I've never rated them higher than a four on any of my ratings with mm -hmm. on untap. So they're a solid brewery. They get the job done. But at the end of the day, you know, as far as a brewery, how I look at them, if I rated them on that five point scale, they'd be like a three seven five for me. You're jumping ahead. We're just doing favorite, least favorite, and what you want to drink. But whatever, Rod. <laughs> it's your show. You do what you want. So it's your I show. Call, you I just, call you my just... shot. 
Uh, yeah, no, you keep talking, Joe, and I get the fuck out. I get it. No doubt. No doubt. You the see. least favorite I've had from them has been the uh, <laughs> the golden at the golden hour, golden hour, and the uh, Berliner Vice have been the two worst ones, and the Porch Rocker was on that list too, and the Cherry Wheat. So there's a lot. There's a lot on this list. Give them a second. I give like two point fives out of five. Um, no, that's barely passing. So. I mean, they, they try they try different stuff. They, like I said, they make over 60-something beers that are trying different things, which you can always appreciate. But there's none of them that are knocking out a part for me. They're not, they're not a home run hitter in my book. They're going to be like your get on base, maybe break out a double, maybe a triple. Maybe they're kind of your uh, who would it be? Lead off hitter. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're kind of good. It's just like maybe your Brandon Phillips type player. They might get you an occasional triple. Not really going to be a home run. You're going to be seeking from them, but you might get a run to bases. You might lay out a double. I just um, want to point out. I just want to point this out for all the viewers. It was Rod's idea to do Samuel Adams this week. Just pointing this out. I don't, I, don't, I don't side with many breweries. I mean, like I said, they're they're good. They're just not a top brewery for me. Like if it was a piece of paper, it'd be in your trash right now. Is what you're saying? No, That's what Sam no, Adams is. It would it would it would make the cut. If, you know. <laughs> Someone's got to be that 53rd player, 50th player on the football team. You know, someone's got to be mm-hmm. there. And all of them are good players on the team. They made it to the big league. But, you know, some are more special teams players than offense or defense. What? what? <laughs> okay, so you can just stop <laughs> shitting on the brewery for a second. No, uh, what, what, what is hey, – what you is, be a great is, special teams player. <laughs> Buffalo, <laughs> Buffalo, remember Don Beebe? He was a wide receiver. How about Steve? How about Steve Tasker? Special teams player. Yo, Steve Tasker was the best special teams player. Um, um, Steve Tasker, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so what, what, what beer do you want to try from them? If, if any, I don't even know why I'm asking this because it doesn't seem like there's any you want to try at any I would, point. After. I'd be like, Eric, Fire Utopia is the one I would want to try from them. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So now we move on from a hater to probably another hater. We got Todd. Todd, <laughs> favorite, least favorite beer you want to try? If you want to shit on, that's cool too. No big deal. <laughs> Let's give it to you. It's gonna be yeah. great. I appreciate the honesty, Rob. When Jim Cook doesn't watch this, uh, yeah. <laughs> we all for me, uh, <laughs> for me, the best one I've had was uh, the 2015 Utopias. Uh, and probably closely, I don't know if any of you guys have, have had this or seen it. Um, it's Cosmic Mother Funk, which oh, is yeah. an American Wild Bill. And that was that was really solid. Those were in the corked, right? The corked and caged uh, like wine bottles, like the 750s. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that one was really good. Um, those two, by far, are the best ones that I've had from them. And like Rod said, it's not one that I seek out as an overall for brewery. Of a beginner stage, if you're going to venture out into just to drink in the craft beers, I mean, it's something you know readily available. You can get them pretty much anywhere. You know they don't do anything. I don't think over the top. They're not even shit. solid. I guess you could say they're solid. So, so least favorite. better than them, but you know, <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a least favorite and one that you want to try at some point? Hey, at least, at least you know. <laughs> Yeah, at least favorite for me is probably the cherry wheat. Yeah. Top of my head. Um, and, and like you, I think their uh, uh, Oktoberfest is, is one of the better Oktoberfests out there, I do believe. Oh, I think so. Um, one that I want to try, I don't know, probably the New England style IPA that they're going to come out with. Sweet. Their uh, take is on that variety or the style of beer. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's pretty much. You know, yeah, Sam Adams, right? Not, Nothing, not uh, right now, yeah, right, yeah. Nothing you're gonna get excited about, but never, never. Um, I, I'm actually kind of like Rod in some aspects here, Whoa. not on the whole shitting on Sam Adams aspect, but like some of the <laughs> beers that he likes. Um, so, so Utopias would be my favorite, but I'm gonna take them and throw them to the side just because, like, that's again one of those hard to get. And by hard to get, I mean, you gotta pay a lot to get it. You can find it, you just pay a lot. So, I went for like normal, regular beer. Um, Old Fezziwig always has a soft place in my heart every year. I try to get at least a bottle of that because I think it's one of the better winter warmers out there. Um, the Chocolate Bock and the Cherry Chocolate Bock, both really, really good beers. Yeah, and I was, uh, good, yeah. I was really surprised at the Nitro Coffee Stout that they had a couple years ago. Uh, they had the Nitro Coffee Stout. They had the Nitro IPA, the Nitro White Ale. I thought the Nitro IPA was just not for me. It was not good. If I was Rod, I would throw it through a window. Yeah, I like but the Nitro IPA. 
See, I didn't. I didn't like it. I, I like the nitro coffee. I think the nitro coffee was way. It, I didn't have many expectations for it, so it surpassed any expectations I had for it. It was fantastic. But like, I think Sam Adams does seasonals the best out of everything. Like their Oktoberfest is solid. You talked about Cold Snap. Cold Snap's a solid. You know, uh, spring seasonal is really, really, really solid. I don't like the summer ale, but then again, I don't like Grains of Paradise, so that's just a personal preference. Uh, but like Oktoberfest, their their chocolate bock, their old Fezziwig, their holiday porters. Another one that comes in the. Uh, Winter pack, all really damn good beers and ones that I try to have every single year, at least once, because I feel like, you know, every year I should I should try it. Least favorite cherry wheat by far. Like there's just no love yeah, for the cherry wheat, wheat around here, I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. They love cherry wheat everywhere, but it's I mean, again, we were talking about it offline before we came online, but it just has that like Robitussin cherry uh cough syrup, cherry uh cough drop medicinal note to it that kind of for me just it's just not – I mean, I, it doesn't taste like real cherry. It tastes like fake cherry, right? So that's one that I don't like. Um, I also – they had a Juniper IPA a couple years ago that I was not a fan of. Uh, I don't think they ever brought it back for good reason. So uh, I don't really hate too many or, or strongly dislike any of the Sam Adams beers. But th for the most part, they are all like mid-range okay. Like if I went to my untap, so many of the Sam Adams fall in like the 3 to 3.5 range. To get over 3.5 for me for Sam Adams, it has to be something that kind of stands out. But I don't think outside of Utopia, Strad, I've rated anything over a four either, honestly. I think it's just kind of the brewery that they are for me at this point. Yeah. Todd made a great point, though. Um, I feel like if you – if any, again, I'm not going to speak for everyone, everywhere on the panel, but I have a feeling that a lot of us, when we first got into craft beer, Sam Adams was probably one you might have picked stuff up from because it was reasonably priced. It was everywhere, and I know me personally, I started out on Saranac and Sam Adams and picking up variety packs. It was the cheapest way. I mean, you're talking 12 packs of six different beers for like $12 to $15. It's hard to, it's hard to argue over a dollar a, a, a bottle of beer when you can try so many different styles. And do they make the greatest beers like Sam Adams and Saranac and breweries like that? No, they don't make the greatest beers. But if you're getting into craft beer, it's a great introductory uh, brewery to try a bunch of styles at one time, not pay an arm and a leg, and you get a kind of representation of what each of the styles you know how how they taste. They might not be the best in the style, but you get an idea if you whether or not you like the style. So that's how I I came into craft beer was buying Sam Adams, and I've probably tried 40, 50, 60 different Sam Adams over the year, and I don't regret it whatsoever. But much like Rod is saying, and I think it kind of goes for all of us, we don't seek out Sam Adams. You're not you don't we don't go to the craft beer store and go, oh man, what's the Sam Adams new release? Because whatever. I mean, they have. New releases every day, apparently. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things where they're 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 a solid brewery, but they're one of those breweries that, for me, I don't seek out, and I think that pretty much goes for the rest of us. Like you're not going nuts over it. Beer, I want to try New England style IPA with Todd. I think I, I just want to see what they do with the New England style, and, and be curious to see what the price point is, what the distribution is, uh, and I think they're going to sell it four packs. But I'm sure we'll see a lot of reviews in the next couple months when they do release it. Um, but anyway, yeah. yeah All right, I, so to finish this up, you, oh, what, what, what do you got, Tom? I was going to say, I think you made a good point there because I, I was in the same shoes of you. Uh, starting out with craft beer, you could just buy those variety packs, you know, Sam's Club or whatever for, for 20 bucks or whatever. And you're getting a wide variety. And like I said, more like just kind of a starter type type thing before you actually yep. palate grew into knowing what the styles were and, and what they were supposed to be. What do you guys think of the barrel age so, collection that they've got? I, I've had a couple, and I think they're pretty damn good. Again, they're they're higher priced of Sam yeah. Adams, like they're, they're like eight, ten, twelve bucks a bottle. But like I think that was the one that Todd had the Cosmic Mother fun what was kind of in there along with that, like part of it. Um, their Bomber series, which they've had, you know, for the last three or four or five years, and, and the Barrel Age series are some of the best stuff that they've done, honestly, in my opinion. That's the one that's at 13th or whatever or something. Yeah, th they have a 13th hour, I believe it's yeah. called. They had the Cosmic Mother Funk. They had, I think the the, the wine um, style bottles were barrel aged for the most part. And then they had actually bombers, 22 ounce bombers. They had like a Goza. Now, Sam Adams had one of the first Gozas like released in the States in a long time, uh, back in like 2011, 12. Like I remember seeing it on the shelf and people were like, what the hell's a Goza? Now, like everybody makes a Goza, right? Everyone knows what a Goza is back then. <laughs> There's a, man, they misspelled Goose. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Is it Goosey? No, it's not. It's close. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, no, and, and, and to further your point, uh, not to pull out the, oh, my God, we've been drinking craft beer forever. But for people who have gotten into craft beer over the last couple of years, um, you know, and I know Eric's one of those guys who's gotten into craft beer the last couple of years. You, beer has changed a lot in even the last five years, ten years. When I first got into craft beer about nine years ago, there was one place around here I could buy individual single bottles of stuff. You had to buy like six packs and four packs and or bombers of stuff. Yeah. So buying Sam Adams and Saranac and places that were releasing the variety packs was the cost efficient way to try new styles without having needing to buy entire four packs and six packs of beers you might not like. And people nowadays who just got into craft beer last couple of years, that's kind of like blows their mind. They're like, what you can't buy it like you can't buy individual, but no, like 10 years ago, you couldn't even buy individual bottles at more than a handful of places. So it, craft beer has come a long way, but for people who have started out 10, 15 years ago, buying those variety packs were a way to get into craft beer without, you know, spending all your money and, and, and uh, buying six packs of stuff that you never want to drink again. It's an excellent so, point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's it, in craft beer. How it is now is amazing. You know, you, every all of us right here, all four of us, people in the comments, you can go to your local place and get mixed six packs. You can get, you can go to a store that has 2000 different craft beers and you can get individual bottles of all of them. It's like fantastic. We don't, if you want to go buy three bottles of something, you can, you don't even have to buy six packs anymore. It's, it's fantastic how it is now. So um, I think that's kind of why a lot of people don't experience Sam Adams and a lot of the lesser places now, because it's not like a necessity to try stuff. Which is a good and bad thing, but I think that's kind of like, like you talk to a lot of people who get into craft beer, they don't go after Sam Adams. They just don't because they, they don't need to anymore. It's not like a necessity. So I just think that's interesting in the whole grand scheme of things. But anyway, rambling now. We'll finish it up. Um, we'll go with uh, well, Rod already beat me to the punch, but we'll start with Rod because he can just repeat himself. But uh, <laughs> your overall opinion of the beer and a rating out of five, what would you give him? Uh, a nice. Solid brewery, three point seven five out of five. There you go. All right, damn, simple to the point. Top with you, <laughs> straight to the point. <laughs> don't don't look for home runs. Look for the guy to get on base with them. Yeah. Don't try, don't don't try yeah, to double on that trip. Yeah. <laughs> base to base, just base to base, right? Right. <laughs> Money ball. But for me, it's no. They're just a, a good kind of starter brewery. They don't do anything out of the box. Yeah, they, you know, they do a couple things out of the box. But for the most part, for being mainstream that everybody can get, they're maybe average. I think. I would, I'd put them at maybe a three, three point five. Out of five. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Shit, not a little bit more than Rod. Maybe. Did, so this is maybe. taking a turn. This is taking a big turn. All right, so we got 375 for um, Rod. Three, maybe a 3.5. I would say with that, I, I guess, Todd, you're putting in like the 3.25 range then, like right in between there. <laughs> three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Oh, baby, three and a quarter. Todd's but if you have 3.35. 3. Yeah. How's that? What's that? <laughs> three point what? 3.35. How's that? Uh, 3.35. Just making them random numbers. No big deal. Um, <laughs> Eric, Eric, <laughs> how do you put that on tapped? No, I, Eric. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You, you have to actually write. There's some people that on tap, they'll be like, they'll give it a 3.75. And they'll be like, I'll give it a 3.875 out of five. I'm like, what are you doing? It's either one or the other. 3.375 or four. There's not a, you don't have to go exact. Come on. All right. So, uh, same thing for you, Eric. Um, you know, your overall opinion and what would you give them out of five? I mean, Sam Adams to me is a brewery that, and we've all said it, they're a solid brewery. They uh, Most of the stuff they make is you're going to like, but they they have some misses too. I mean, like the to me, it was the, the new world from their barrel age series I thought was not good. I think the, uh, the Rebel series, their session and the regular Rebel are not that great. There was a couple of other ones in the, in the variety packs, I didn't think we're all that great, but m more times than not, Samuel Adams is going to have good beers to try, or not good beers to try, excuse me, beers to try that are good. So I'm based on that without rambling on and on and on. I think I'm going to agree with Rod. I think a three seven five is a, it, it's solid, but not great, not not bad, but solid. 
That's fair. No, and and, and I, I'm not going to ramble on another. I, I ramble too much. I'm going to give that. I think they're a solid brewery, great introductory brewery for people that want to get into craft beer. If you're not sure what to try and you see something in the style from Sam Adams, pick it up. You probably won't be disappointed. You probably won't be blown over, but that's kind of how they right. roll. I'd give them a three, five out of five. I'd give them a solid three, five out of five. I, th nothing more, nothing less. They have some really great beers. They have some really terrible beers, some in between. Uh, probably one of the more consistent breweries for good or bad that we've done on the show, but they're very consistent in their output and they put out a lot of beers. So, uh, I mean, if you've never had Sam Adams and you drink craft beer, I don't know. I don't know. I, like, I don't know. Is that even a thing? Is that possible? I guess if you're not in the U S or in North America, probably, but, uh, yeah. I, so I, it's probably, they probably had the lowest score I think so far on the show. I probably averaged like three, five yeah, or so. One so far. Yeah. Which I doesn't surprise me going into it. I mean, that's, kind of where they belong uh in my opinion but uh i'll never say really anything negative about sam adams because there's nothing really to say negatively about them other than J jim cook might be a dick i think that's what someone said earlier i'm gonna stand by that yeah uh comments we'll go to comments and then you can do whatever the fuck you want rod this is your show um <laughs> we have uh chris says hashtag the beard is gone so no more pray for joe that's right you can't pray for me anymore uh, Paul said, are you still going? Uh, I don't, is that, are you hammered? <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. Was that you vomiting or upset that we're still going? Um, Bum says, Eric, I agree with you on the cream stouts. Still, after all these decades, one of my favorite, quote, basic stouts. And I agree, that's that's damn good beer. And then Eric says, faux show. Uh, Earth says he likes the dark lager, which is their, um, what the hell is it? Uh what is the what is what is the actual style name of the dark lager? Why can't I think of this? I think it's the black black lager. Yeah, it's it, the black lager, dark lager. But what's the actual style name? I'm gonna go look it up. Oh, it's a lager. Why can't I can't think about it. Though. There we go, Schwarzbier. That's I was just I can't I couldn't think. Yeah, Schwarzbier. Um, yeah, that was another pretty good one. Again, I haven't seen that lately. I don't know if any of you guys seen the black lager, but I mean yeah. I haven't seen it. You have or haven't? Wait, is that the Dortois the, the black lager? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, hang, now hang on. Now, Bum says uh, Sam Adams black lager, rest in peace. So I guess they discontinued it at some point. Bum, do you have any information on when they did? If so, comment it up some. Um, Paul says the black ale is good. You mean the black lager? <laughs> I don't think they did black ale. Bum says he still has all of his uh, my Sam bottles going back to the late 80s and still have yet to photograph them. Look for a massive untapped Samuel Adams check in. Black Still, I think the last person is at November 26th. Oh, really? Maybe he had an aged bottle, daddy. Yeah. Maybe not, but uh, Bum apparently is going to do a lot of backlogging. I can't wait. All the Sam Adams old school uh, lo uh, logos and labels. Um, Chris says, sounds like that Nitro would be fantastic. Talking about the Nitro uh, coffee stout. I think you would like it, Chris, but then again, you like everything on Nitro. So, um, nice. Bum says, <laughs> what's that? Nitro or. Yeah, and he's, he is a nitro whore, no doubt. I mean, Rod, Rod said it, but I agree. With it. So, you know. Ch cherry wheat from Bum. Cherry wheat tastes like someone poured Robitussin into an ashtray. That's one way to put it. I can't disagree. Um, Earth says it is pretty decent. I forgot that, about that one, the nitro stout, that is, the nitro coffee stout. Yeah, like I said, it, I thought it was pretty damn good. Um, Chris says I should have grabbed it when I had the chance. Yes, you, sh you should have. So you know what they say about that? That's on you. <laughs> he knew it was coming. Earth yeah, it says you'd probably enjoy it, Chris, since you like Nitro stuff, aka Nitro Whore. Uh, Chris gives the thumbs up because he knows that we speak the truth. Um, Bum says, I wrote Boston Brewing a fan letter in the mid-90s. They sent me a bunch of cool promo material. I'll post on my Google Plus page as soon as I unearth it. Is that a shot at Earth, or are you actually going to unearth it? <laughs> <laughs> Earth says, you mean when you open the trap door to your dungeon that ha has a huge padlock on it for decades, bomb? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, shots oh, fired. This is turning dumb. Like, maybe Bum is actually, like, Paul's, like, half-brother or something. What's going on here? Shots <laughs> fired. Yeah, Bum, Bum responds with, Earth, I told you not to mention that trap door. <laughs> what is happening? Um... It just gives them the, the like the cheers. Uh, Bum says Sam Adams is uh, is and also ran nowadays. But believe me, they were the best thing going if you were a beer drinker in the late '80s. And and that's I mean, yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. Yeah, it's kind of the best way to explain it to to people is like, you know, 30 years ago or 25, 30 years ago, 
you look at a lot of these breweries like the Sierra Nevadas and the you know uh, Boston Beer Company and Anchor. Back then, yeah, these places were doing great stuff because back then there wasn't anything like them. And so many people that didn't get a chance to try them when craft beer was in its infancy, they'll never understand what those beers meant to people back then. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a shame, but that's how life works. Right. So, you know, now it's all about haze bros and everything barrel aged and can't just drink an enjoyable black lager or a lager in general, because it's got to have coffee and vanilla in it. And it's got to have mosaic hops and it's just gotta be crazy. Um, Paul comes back and says they did do a black L. They did indeed. And then bum, he says, bum, that sounds like my house. That's what we were referencing because it totally does sound like your house. Bum has some crazy, crazy ish happening in his basement. Um, and then bum says the black lager was discontinued several years ago, but was brought back in variety packs last year or 2016. So maybe someone saved one. I don't remember the Black Lager being in the 16 packs and their variety packs. Yeah, I, I mean, they, it was probably brought back in, like, I want to say. Well, there were a few people that had tech news from 2017. So I want to say, I want to say it was brought back in, like, the har their harvest pack. Their, uh, oh, in the fall pack? Yeah, because I, I think it was originally in the fall pack when I had it. But I don't know. I Again, this comes down to Sam Adams. We, there's, they have so many beers. A lot yeah. of them. They put them in different variety packs, six packs, cases, whatever, and they just seemingly just throw them in whatever. I don't know. Too many beers to keep track of. And then last but not least from Bummy says my Sam Adams analogy. If you've excuse me, if you've only ever eaten dirt and tree bark, chicken McNuggets are going to be the best thing you've ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get what he's saying. That's I mean, pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> and Paul says he loves the black ale, all beer, and Schwartz beer. So yeah, I mean yeah, I, pretty much it for Sam Adams. We're done. It's over. Yeah. Pain, it, it was painful, but it's done. So there we go. So another brewery ran down, and next week I guess we'll look at another one. Which one we're thinking? Any, any preliminary notes? Are not out there. Which one? There's only like seven billion we can do, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you, are you guys thinking of one? Is there something you want to see? Are people are commenting? Are there people something they want to see? Yeah, if anybody in the comments wanna wanna, I don't know. I mean, like, there's a lot. Like, I posted like 20 the other day in our in our private Facebook uh, chat where we all can get them. And then Rod posted like another half dozen. Like, there's still a lot of breweries you're gonna be able to do. So a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. Let and the viewer choose. Let yeah, the there's a lot. Choose. Mm -hmm. So but the funny thing is, um, one of the pieces I was gonna look at here before we wrapped up was the. Pace Magazine, if you ever look at their website, they do some pretty interesting stuff on alcohol. So they had a piece on the 12 best beers of 2017, and they basically do all their stuff under blind tasting. So they kind of yeah. do a blind tasting thing, which is pretty cool. But it's funny because tying it back to Boston Beer Company, it says um, the format itself has the benefit of taking hype entirely, entirely out of the equation but in doing so, you have to live with the consequences of your blind tasting results, even if they may be different from what you expected. Case in point, would I have predicted every orchard to win our 2016 blind tasting of ciders, even mm -hmm. if it was a special release? Answer, nope. But that's what happened. So when you do the blind tasting, sometimes you're surprised, like you mentioned about the Oktoberfest. So again, you take a lot of that stuff out. So that's kind of a cool thing. But they ran down a list of their 12 best beers of 2017. And they figure they had a thousand and twenty-two beers they tried by the end of November, and then added more in December for like another hundred. But they came out with the best Imperial Stout non-barrel aged. It says River North Mister Sandman out of Denver, Colorado, ABV thirteen point five. So if anybody's had that beer, be kind of interested. But they thought that was a really good Imperial Stout. And then they scroll down here, best session IPA. Southern Prohibition, Devil's Harvest out of Hattiesburg, Hattiesburg Mississippi, 4.9 ABV. So they're looking at stuff across the country here. Um, see the other one down here. Best Belgian Triple, uh, Strafe Hendrick Bruges Triple Beer, a ABV 9% out of Bruges, Belgium. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I said that right or not, but I'm going to leave it there. 
Uh, best in, best barrel aged Imperial Stout, Fremont Brewing Company, BBA Dark Star, Seattle, Dark Star? Washington. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that beer before. Uh, let's see what else they got here. I also just want to point before you go on, I, 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 and I've said this for a while now. I, yeah, blind. If it was possible for every single beer tuber to review, you know, blind, that's the one hundred percent only way authentically to give your unbiased opinion on a beer. You have no preconceived notions going in because you don't know what it is, and it's just you rely on your palate and your 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 nose, and that's it, right? I mean, it's but it's virtually impossible <laughs> to do. Right. You have like a significant other or somebody that is willing to do that, you know. Yeah, it's a tough thing to do for sure because, you know, you're usually going out and you're getting the beers. Um, so you already know what you got there. Yeah. But uh, best wheat beer, Hefeweizen. And my thing scroll here. Give me a little second here. Also, Paul, Paul, we already did Lagunitas, buddy. <laughs> like two weeks ago. <laughs> Come on, Paul. Get with your shit, Paul. <laughs> uh, best wheat beer, Hefeweizen, live oak Hefeweizen. And that's out of Texas, Del Valle, yeah, Texas, Texas, right? 5.2 yeah. ABV. Best Saison, and we are a fan of the Saisons, Burial Separation of Light and Darkness, Asheville, North Carolina. You know what's crazy about that live oak Hefeweizen? I remember that- when I f- first got into craft beer, that was like one of still one of the best rated Hefeweizens and best rated beers on Beer Advocate, like in 09. And oh. the crazy that, yeah, and I remember always wanting to try that, but I like, when I realized and learned that they like don't distribute it outside of like the, the local area, I was like, Oh, I'll never get it or whatever. And it's funny to see that nine years later that this one's a blind you know, <laughs> tasting for Hefeweizens. That's crazy to me. That was uh, fucking really damn good. Best sour wild ale, black project peacemaker out of Denver, Colorado, 5.5% ABV. I do find myself liking more of the sours nowadays though. Yeah, it, it, that that is a style. I know Eric, you're not a huge fan of them, and, and you're trying to get into sours. It's it takes a while to get into sours. Like you just got to find what works for you. And it might mm-hmm. take years, but you'll you'll find them. Maybe you won't, but most people eventually they'll find like one yeah. sub style that you be like, yeah, I want to try that. I mean, for me, I have the benefit because I have a good brewery here that actually knows how to really make them with Urban Artifacts. They do a great job. <laughs> uh, Best Goza Creature Comforts Tritonia. Out of Athens, Georgia, four point five percent ABV. That's a brewery that gets quite a bit of hype. Creature Comfort. And then um, best double IPA, Brew Gentleman Lou Ales for ALS twenty seventeen Braddock PA. And I'm telling Bob, get to Brew Gentleman. I hear I want to go down to PA and meet Bob and give him a high five. Perhaps don't get trapped oh, in a dungeon. Bob can get over there probably pretty easily. No, it's brewery only. They don't distribute it. It's, it's in PA. Uh, it's brewery. I thought he could take a couple hours. I think it's like three hours for him, but brew gentlemen and uh, dancing gnome are the two that are doing really good hop forward stuff in PA. Um, I think I mentioned a bum before and he hasn't had a chance to get over there, but I still say bum get over there. <laughs> Best pumpkin beer, lift bridge, Imperial palm water, Stillwater, Minnesota, eleven point five percent ABV. I feel like best pumpkin ale or best pumpkin beer is an oxymoron. <laughs> That'll help you find a great pumpkin with eleven point five. Yeah, the great pumpkin is right there in the pumpkin patch. <laughs> we got some pretty good. <laughs> you don't see them. I see you. <laughs> best stout under eight percent. Proof Brewing Company, Coffee Creators in the Dark, Tallahassee, Florida. Hmm. 7.8% ABV. So many good beers around the country, well, around the world, even. Next. Best, best Christmas beer, Scaldus Noel out of yeah. Luz Papayax, Belgium. Yeah, that's, A-I-X. That's, a cl- that's a classic. Well, I say classic, but it's, it's well known. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, that golden Corolla's I got downstairs. That's one I didn't even drink that. I just realized that. That's oh 10.5 ABV. To go back to you, there's a lot of beer around. That's why when people fret about not getting a certain beer, it's like it doesn't even matter anymore. Like there's yeah. so much good stuff. I mean, <laughs> you, you might miss out on one beer, but you'll get the next one. People line up for the beers though, but there's so yeah. much that, that are out there that I don't know. I just haven't felt that urge to have to line up for anything yet. Still to this day. Hey Rod, does that does that beer list say how many they tried of, of each style? 
to come up with their list? No, there? it just said how many they, they nice. blind tasted over yeah. the time. It's random too, uh, Todd. Like it's anywhere from like fifty to hundred. I know because I've seen like the, the IPAs and stuff. The only problem I have with that, like when it comes to the hop four stuff that they do, is how fr- is how fresh is everything? Because yeah. if you're reviewing a can of an IPA that's two weeks old to one that's two months old, how do how do you, I mean how do you really do that? I don't think that's fair to the one that's older. Not a fair, yeah, not a fair you know? assessment. So, but I, I've never actually delved too far into that to see what they do. I think they try to get stuff relatively fresh, but when you're t- blind taste testing. 70 80 90 beers you'd have to imagine they're not all super fresh and you're also limited by your universe right so it's only a yeah. matter of what you have in front of you so there's tons of beer that they haven't tried yet either so and you're limited by your palate which will get smashed about 20 or 20 or so different beers in yeah. you start drinking 50 or 60 over the course of a couple of days i'm sure your palate's just like it's just yeah. stop just stop with the ipas please <laughs> i mean this ain't coke versus pepsi man no <laughs> It is not. Um, got a couple of, couple last comments. Rule. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so Chris says do Yingling, and then Eric says I can't get Yingling in Michigan. You will soon now because they're Michigan. Yeah, we're not doing back to back the top two. Okay, craft breweries <laughs> in terms of output. Okay, we can't do that. That's not. It's not that we, we have to space. Them oh, he wants us to do Yingling. Uh, yeah, yeah, Yingling. We can once once Eric gets it because we all we all get it. Um, he says none, no se- session <laughs> IPAs exist. Well, they kind of do. Uh, then Chris says, "Do A, B, and Bev." Chris, I appreciate your showing. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Earth, Earth has one that I mentioned. I think last. Do A, B, and Bev. You can do Wicked Weeds. You can do. Yeah, we're just gonna forget what he said. <laughs> not gonna, not gonna uh, Earth has a good one, which I think we should do soon. Ama gang, or Oma gang. Ama gang. That's a that's a pretty. I mean, I like them. I'd totally go buy a beer or two of theirs to do. Um, Game of Thrones. Yeah, malt Mustang shows up and says, "Still awaiting Samuel Adams malt liquor." <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a Samuel L. Jackson version from Chappelle Show. <laughs> uh, bum shows up. So here's bum. 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 bum, bum. I'm gonna say. You should probably go to Brew Gentlemen's because he says, I just drove by Brew Gentlemen's yesterday. Bro, get on it. Maybe if we can get Bum to get permission to do a cameo malt liquor report, we'll do a malt liquor episode one time. We will, but only if Bum but shows Jody up. Is off on it, yeah, Jody, Bum, they have to show up. Otherwise, no go. There's, I will not buy <laughs> not buy it unless they're both here. <laughs> but all about Jody's. There are bums here and Jody size off on it. But um, Earth says Buffalo Bill's Black Pumpkin. Now that is a pumpkin beer everyone needs to try. Oh. Uh, I remember having Buffalo Bill's Pumpkin Ale. I never had the Black Pumpkin, though. Sounds interesting. I wonder if this is a stat like kind of how Sierra Nevada has more luck in pumpkin, man. Yeah, it's probably just a pumpkin stout, one would yeah. imagine. Which I like Warlock over pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that goes without saying. Maybe not, though. Founder. Uh, <laughs> Chris says, do founders if you haven't yet. Could do founders. I'm sorry, they're uh, owned by a macro company. Uh, they, are, they are a macro yeah. nut track, but it is. We, we're we're going to get to them, but I think we were too heavy on some of like the Michigan that we did. We've done dark. But do we do dark horse? No, we haven't. No, we, we, no, okay. Dark horse yet. we were talking about possibly doing Flying Dog or um, Ballast Point. Yeah. Which is still, you know, another one owned, but. We could do our first international beer in Anger. Anger wouldn't be a bad one. You know, I'm not looking up anything that needs me to pronounce stuff in a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know if I pronounced it correctly. I think Anger is translated on the Wikipedia page, so you'd be good. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna say I anger is fine, but like when it starts getting into other stuff, I'm Did just you see beer when you pull up the site, you're like, What am yeah. I looking yeah, at? What here? am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing? I'm doing something very incorrectly. I got a squiggly line, squiggly line. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, Rod usually does a good job of posting this on his channel a good three, four, five days beforehand, so uh. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll talk amongst ourselves and figure it out. But yeah, there's that's the thing. You guys mentioned Ama Gang. We thought Victory Brewing too. That's another one. Yeah, Victory. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of breweries we can do. There's a lot. So because we're trying to get something that regionally, at least for the beginning right now, we all can get too. 
yeah, there's there's going to be times I, uh, once we do run out, which will be a long while from now, that we could, you know, send quick beer mails to everyone with yeah. a, a bottle or two or whatever. Like, hey, here's my local place. Do it. We'll talk about it. And it'll be like first impressions for people, too. Like, I've never had a Shaftley beer. So everyone can get it except for me. If we want to do it at some point, somebody send me a couple bottles. We'll talk about it. I'll my first impressions on it. And not that anyone cares, but it'd be cool to you know, Eric, get Eric and get something we talked about. Shaftley, I think I can get Shaftley. No, it was a different one that you didn't get either. Yeah, I can't remember. So I think so. I mentioned it, but oh, Brooklyn's another one too. Yeah. Oh, Brooklyn, yeah, Brooklyn's one we'll have to do. They're pretty, you know. I, that's what. To be honest with you, though, this is why I like doing some of these these breweries like Sam Adams stuff is because I don't really go out of my way to try this stuff anymore. Uh, unless I randomly just throw things into like a mix of six pack or something. So it's good to like, I'm not, I'm honestly not going to go on my way to buy a Brooklyn beer, but if we do it for the show, I'll definitely go get a couple bottles of it to just to retry or try something new from them. And that's right. kind of a, a selling point to me on top of just talking about them, you know, nice. Yeah. True that. And if, hey, if you ever want to get us any more of the, uh, <laughs> What was the one for Citra Daydream? <laughs> yeah, if I just happen to just run into other half, you know. Yeah, we could always do another half. Why, why I wait two hours in line and I just happen at the end of that line to run into more cans of their stuff. <laughs> sure. Yeah, if you just happen to stumble upon it. Yeah. Right, if they, I'll tell you what, if they do another mobile canning release here, yeah, I mean, we could definitely do it and I'll send you guys off a couple like I did last time. No issues. Uh, I don't know how often that's going to happen, yeah. but if it does again, I will, I will do it. Uh, a couple half. Of, yeah, hey, other half. Half. yeah. All, all three of these guys down here. Yeah. I sent it to yeah. me. <laughs> me. I, I given you guys. I like. I, go look at the reviews. Like highest rating ever from Rod. Ninety one. That's like he's a hundred. <laughs> he gave it a ninety one. No. Uh, no. That's that's it's. You know. There's a that reason. That's the highest rating I've given under the new rating system. Yeah. It here's the thing, and you guys all have now drinking them. You know why people wait in line for them? Like they're <laughs> great beer. I get it. I swear I weigh a lot for it. It's really good. I it was really good. Yeah, I mean it's it, they, they make great beer. And uh so you know. Um Bum says I think the Buffalo Bills was the original pumpkin beer. I remember looking at it and saying, Who the hell would ever buy a pumpkin beer? Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. Now I remember that was that was one of the like they only had uh when I first got into them, there was maybe like a you know, maybe a handful of them. There was uh Elysian, Elysian. Uh Listen. they did Elysian did they they had their night owl. I remember that show. That one was actually, yeah. That's a good one. And then there was Buffalo Bills. There was uh who else had uh, there was uh Pumpkin from Southern Tier, but there wasn't a lot of them locally. And I remember Buffalo Bill, the pumpkin one being the one that really sold well. And then like two years later, it just stopped showing up here. So uh, Earth says he wants plead the fifth from Dark Horse. Can't get them here. That's a good one. That's up by Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Dark Horse. Earth, uh, yeah, that's a good one. maybe we'll we'll find a way for one of us or a couple of us to you know maybe do a beer trade as the. I have a bourbon barrel Scotty Karate. So. I have a bourbon barrel age plead the fifth. Oh, I'm gonna try and get a fresh you know, one. That's just fantastic. Um, <laughs> Earth says he haven't tried the Buffalo Bills pumpkin ale, just the pump, black pumpkin stout. Um, and uh, Eric says I'm gonna try and get the bourbon barrel age plead the fifth. Earth says I have to trade for it. <laughs> I did trade for it. And it is worth trading for because that is an awesome beer. Actually, if you guys care to, I don't know, uh, be bored to death, uh, Paul P.A. Brutus, him and I actually reviewed Bourbon Barrel Age Plead the Fifth. I, I sent him one. We did it on his channel. I, it was probably horrible like two or three years ago. But, yeah, we reviewed it, and it was – yeah, it's proper. It's really good. No. But I think that's another one that's bear, uh, brewery only as well, so – you know, they do the, they, they do a really I think they just did the release like maybe a month ago for it. they do the uh four elves uh release they do a the, the winter warmer they have yeah, uh, yeah. four elves they, and they, they just do, did the four elf a couple weeks ago yeah well they, they also release plead the fifth at that release they do the they do like a rum barrel age uh four elf they do like a bear, uh, bourbon barrel age and they do the the plead the fifth bourbon barrel age they do like a whole event people wait over line, uh, overnight and stuff it's crazy Awesome. Yep, yep. Well, I think we've been on for a while, so we'll probably close it down here. And uh, Eric, you want your spotlight moment? All right, guys. If you've had too much to drink, please get a designated driver. There's zero tolerance now. 
for when you get behind that wheel and you've had a little bit one too many because you know you're going to get pulled over. You're going to do the stupid sobriety test. They're going to make you look like a fool. Then you get thrown in the back of a cop car. Then you get jail time, court fees, and then possible prison time. And if you hit or kill somebody, you're definitely going into the slammer for a while. And if you kill yourself, all you've done is hurt, all you've done is hurt your family and friends. Sleep off your buzz, get your car the next day, get an Uber, Lyft, taxi, call a buddy, ask the bartender to get your ride to somebody's just so you're not having to drive your car back home. There you go. And that's because we care. We don't want you doing anything stupid or irrational. So appreciate caring is caring. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, appreciate everybody uh, hanging in and watching tonight and all the comments. And hey, except for you. Your if you haven't seen the Drinking Gamer channel, make sure you check that out. And you can see where Todd and I had a two out of three. Well, best out of oh, three. I got it for him. I took two out of three, I guess. Yeah. So, but you just had to go there, didn't you, Rod? He, he did get a shutout on me because I had a one horrible team that was just horrible. Terrible. What team was that? What horrible team was that? as far as Parker Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> that was, uh, heads. What team was it that I played with that? Um they were bad. They were just. Did you guys do random teams? We did, and that was a random team that got picked. That one was a random team. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get them to play the Cleveland Browns and the San Francisco 49ers. I should have done the Browns and the Lions, but the Lions from like 08. But, oh, but yeah. in all fairness, though, I was, in all fairness, though, that first game, I was the Colts against the Panthers. That was yeah. very. Uh, yeah, uh, even with Andrew Luck, your team sucks. No, it wasn't Andrew Luck. It was the rosters were yeah, upset. <laughs> oh, what did you, did you have? Did you, you didn't have luck, so okay, yeah, that's really bad. Roster is current roster. That's yeah. kind of like having the Browns then a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good game. Eric was trying to coach him, provide coaching advice during the course of it all. <laughs> what are you doing, Mitchell? You're three yards. To the <laughs> Just run every single play with Gore Brissett. Just do it. He was raging a little bit like Redbeard at some of Todd's play calling. So, what am I to do, Knox? Okay, H hang on. We have one last comment here. That's okay, perfect way to end it. Malt Mustang says, "F Dorf, F Reggie, label out, follow the blueprint." There you go. <laughs> Where's to live by a code to live by? <laughs> well, I think that's enough said, and we look forward to catching you guys next week. We'll come up with brewery we may do. And uh, as always, keep drinking those good craft beers. Remember, there's always time. Get your beer on. Cheers and see you guys next time, if not before. Yay, yay. yay.